Good evening, everyone. This is a conference meeting of the City Council of the City of Orange Township held in Council Chambers, City Hall, 29 North Day Street, Orange, New Jersey, on Wednesday, November 6, 2019, at 7.04 p.m. <clears throat> Roll call. Councilman Coley is absent. Councilman Jackson? Here. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Here. Councilwoman Summers Johnson is absent. Councilwoman Williams is absent. Councilwoman Wooten? Here. And Council President Eason? Here. Also present Joyce Lanier, the city clerk. Chris Hartwick, the business administrator. Avram White, um, the law department. Kenneth Douglas, fire department. Adrian Matt, finance department. Marty Mays, planning and public works. Marlon G. Towns, legislative research officer. Lisette Sanchez, record support technician. Please. Stand for a moment of silence. Amen. Please be apprised anyone wishing to discuss agenda or general items shall sign one book. Each person signing the book will be allowed to speak for a maximum of five minutes. The requirement of NJSA 10 colon 4-9 at SEC, the Sunshine Law, has been met. A notice of this meeting was published in the Star Ledger on July 5, 2019 and the record transcript on July 11, 2019. Posted on the bulletin board in City Hall and filed in the office of the City Clerk. Matters of discussion. We're going to go to... Okay. Go ahead. Um. Let me just do some housekeeping. Um, welcome everyone to the council meeting, the first one in November. November is here and Christmas will be here soon. So this year is flying by. So let's hope we all stay healthy, stay safe and stay blessed. Thank you. I just want to say tonight we will have the council meeting. There will be no talking in the audience, no yelling out. If you decide you need to have a conversation, I'm asking that you step into the hallway. We're gonna move this meeting forward in order and respect. So if you yell out, the office is gonna to step to you. The second time he does that, he's gonna ask you to leave and step in the hallway. So we will have none of that tonight. We're gonna to have a business meeting and we're gonna act like we're conducting business. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Move the agenda. Councilman Williams arrived at 7.07. Councilman Williams, mm -hmm. are you ready to? Um, I actually seen people pulling up, so you want to go ahead because I seen family members pulling up. Well, the only reason I say that we were going to do the plaques first because the water is going to be a little longer and maybe everybody don't want to stay that's in the family. So for the family members that's here. They're not here. They're none parking. of them are it's here? Not, it's, it's a lot. No, they're not. They're downstairs parking. Okay. All right. Well, I guess they will be here for a while then. So hopefully everybody has their dinner. And we're going to do the um, water presentation. Is the postmaster here? No. <clears throat> I'm going to introduce um, Kit Neese and John Ludington. Kit is our water superintendent who has been instrumental in assisting and leading the effort to get the water department um, or the water division, uh, utility, sewer, and stormwater in order. Um, do an assessment of those facilities <clears throat> and all of that work which has taken place over the last several months um, 
will be presented in bullet form this evening. Uh, John Luddington is the representative from Suez, the licensed operator with the contract with the city. Um, so we're going to go through uh, a presentation on the capital needs and we'll interject as necessary. Good evening. Thank you very much for having us. And we're um, hopeful that this will be an informative session. We've given everyone um, copies of the PowerPoint. With notes section, we yeah. asked Just state your name for the record. I'm sorry. Katharina Nice, Water Superintendent, Orange Water Works. Uh, so that you can take notes in the end and ask whatever questions that you might want to ask. I'm going to introduce part of our Orange Water Works team. John Luddington is going to introduce some of his subcontractors and people that, that we rely on every day to uh, run the water department. Good evening. My name is John Luddington, and last name is spelled L-U-D-I-N-G-T-O-N. I work for Suez Environmental Services, and we're the contract operator for the city of Orange Township. Um, Kit did mention we have some of our, our team here tonight. And I'd just like to introduce them um, rather quickly. Lisa and uh, Clarence are with the Chagra Group, and they assist us in many of the projects. Don Chagra is here as well. Uh, we also have um, on our team Jason Cox, who you, many of you probably know, um, who helps us innumerably with uh, many of the things we have to get done in the town. So without further ado, I'd like to just have your attention for the, for the uh, slide presentation, and we'll try and go through it. If you don't mind, um, we'd like to hold the questions um, to the end, so if you do have any, uh, we, we can try and answer them at the end or get them to you in writing when, um, when we get them. Uh, I hope you can hear me and I hope the, the citizens watching at home can hear me well. Um, so what is Suez and, and Orange Water Works doing? Well, we're your contract water and wastewater operator. Um, and so you know, everybody reads the paper. They know that uh, natural resources are becoming scarcer and scarcer, and water is one of the most prevalent ones. Um, we're dealing with deteriorating infrastructure in the United States, um, so Orange is not alone in that. Um, but we're designing and implementing new strategies and innovative solutions to help cities like Orange meet what's going to be really some challenges in the future. Um, what we bring <coughs> to the city is a smart and sustainable way to manage um, your operations. Um, we know there's many challenges. The council's faced with a lot of tough decisions, and we try to help you make the right ones by delivering uh, water and wastewater services that not only meet your expectations, but meet them. You can switch um, and, and you should have in your packet a copy of this as well. What it is is the water, Orange Water Works team organizational chart, and you'll see um, the city, the business administrator, the council, really. Um, and also the organization that Suez has. And we were trying to discuss before the meeting, um, when we talk about what value you get from us as your contract operator, how many people really touch uh, the city of Orange on a daily basis. And as I started counting up from people from Suez, our contractors, Chagra Group, um, the operators that we use, uh, the engineers, we got well over 100 people that are involved. Um, pretty much on a daily basis with the operation of your system. And uh, the more we thought about it, the more extensive it gets. So what brings us here tonight to, to discuss about the bond ordinances? Well, um, the City of Orange Township, as water utility, had a, a number of permit violations that came up. Um, and we have a list of them there for you, but I'll go over them really quickly. Inadequate, unreliable water supply, uh, lack of a, a suitable asset management plan for capital improvements, uh, unauthorized uh, non-permitted well production, um, failure to have an emergency response plan that's approved by the federal government. Uh, a couple of our wells were out of service and they have to be re-permitted re when we repaired them. Uh, we failed to comply with a dam safety report. Uh, just some other permitting uh, violations that came up with wells 2, 6R, and 4. We have to have auxiliary power for the utility for the wells um, so that if we have a power failure, particularly the ones that are um, what we call in the woods on, in South Mountain, there has to be adequate backup generation of power so that we can keep the supply going. Uh, we have to, some other uh, programs that have come up is the MS4 permit, which is really stormwater 
and pollution prevention. And there were a couple of reporting uh, issues with that. Failure to submit one in 17 and 18. And the failure to implement a, uh, a GS, uh, GIS uh, ESRI mapping system, which is the satellite mapping of the city. So these are some of the permit violations. And, and frankly, they're not unusual for a lot of municipalities. These are heavy lifts, but we've now come to the point where we have to address them. And that's what our asset, that's what the plan is going forward. So here's our, our timeline. In April, we really started the asset management plan draft and the strategy. Uh, we worked through the summer. Uh, we're now into uh, November, where we're looking for funding for many of the priority projects that we've identified for the city of Orange. This is just a word cloud by the numbers, right? So you, you can see when you have a, a municipally owned utility, you come up with a lot of issues that you're faced with. Meters, power generation, pressure reducing, the, there's just a, a myriad of things that are addressed on a daily basis. Um, and this is just a word cloud sort of uh, showing you that. Instead of skipping over that, let's back up. So <clears throat> it's important to realize that this system covers 30.6 miles of distribution lines. How many well houses? Eight. Eight well houses. How many in-ground water wells? Well, eight. eight. Six in use, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And distribution lines, another 30.6. Um, fire hydrants, over 580. We have a transmission line that crosses a body of water, um, which is an issue. Um, and we have a bunch of shared service situations on our borders. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, so <coughs> what's our Orange Waterworks Capital Improvement Plan? It's a culmination of a process that began in, in the summer of 2019 with phase one. It's a strategic asset management plan. What we're doing is we're projecting revenue and expenditures during this process and we're looking at some of the challenges we've seen and some of the past critical issues that need to be addressed by the water and sewer utility. So there's a couple bullet points there. Um, you can see them, expenses and requests exceeding a revenue, uh, compliance with state agency policies, management and maintenance costs, um, how to best allocate your resources to cover a wide variety of asset needs and balancing all these. We have to keep, always keep in mind um, and we do that at Suez. You're our client, and we know you have to balance a lot of competing priorities, number one of which is the ratepayers and the taxpayers in the city. So ultimately, what's it all about? You know, it's about providing the citizens of Orange the services from the water and sewer utility that, that they expect. And we want to keep the, the utility financially strong. Those are our goals. Um, so, we have to do, implement certain things um, in the city because we want a strong and sustainable program that's established for the upcoming projects that we're planning and that are highlighted in this presentation. Okay. <coughs> the capital right, and, improvement plan. And in addition to the capital improvement planning for that purpose, we have capital improvement planning that's necessary to respond to the notice of violation that DEP has served us with. Um, it was served back in September of 2018. Uh, was it September or October? Yeah, September is October, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a number of items that are listed in that that we've had to address in order to move forward with a whole bunch of projects <coughs> in the city, not the least of which is the improvement to the water system. Right. And we, we recognize that an asset management plan implementation, there aren't, the funds aren't unlimited, right? We have to really balance that with the finite resources that you have. Okay, so what's our capital plan for, for a changing world and we know it's a changing environment? So this just pulls some of our infrastructure uh, challenges. Um, there's a lot of infrastructure risk. The, a lot of the pipes in the ground, the valves, the hydrants, um, they've reached and they're past their expected life expectancy. So Way there's past. always risks involved with that. Way past. Way past. Um, 
So we have to have provide workforce training. One of the things that we've done, we, we were able to partner with the fire department and provide training on some of the new assets that we put into town, the fire hydrants. On And actually, we had a very good couple, four sessions. Uh, I learned a lot, and I think everybody pretty much did, um, uh, regarding the operation of, uh, of proper operation of fire hydrants. Um, we have to also pay attention to paying for infrastructure improvements. Um, we know there's a disparity of everybody's capabilities and resources, so we have to allocate uh, versus need. And that's one of the things the bond ordinances that you'll see before you sort of do. So what is a bond ordinance that you're going to be authorizing for the capital improvement, appropriating money for that purpose? And it authorizes the issuance of bonds or notes to finance all or part of that project. So the first thing we did was we looked at uh, prioritizing some of the projects that we had. And number one we came up with is the asset management plan. Uh, because it's an aging infrastructure, um, one of the most critical issues that we face is making sure that we maintain it properly. And really we have to keep track of it properly. So we're going to look at a computerized maintenance management program. We've already done the, much of the background work with regard to that. And, but we have to have this as a completion, because it's a critical phase of maintaining compliance. Um, as, I, as I talk through this, what I might mention a couple times is what we call the Water Quality Accountability Act, which was enacted by the uh, state legislature there and enforced last year, which we now have to comply with. What the state is really saying is, we know everybody's got critical assets. We know the infrastructure's old, but you've got to put in place a way plan to maintain it as we go forward. This is what we'll be doing with the asset management plan. This is just a chart. Part of the, um, when we go for funding through the, um, what we call the I-Bank or the New Jersey Infrastructure Environmental Trust, you have to have a, a, a chart of work, a schedule of how you're going to do the work. And each of the, each of the projects that we list here will have that um, schedule as part of the work. The second thing we looked at was, was the projects of, we transmit water, we, distrib we distribute water, we have source wells, um, we have to renew the surface lights of those assets. And we have to make sure that all the necessary pipelines, transmission, distribution, and well water resources are properly maintained. So they've got to be upgraded. Again, you have to have a chart of work. Okay. The water collection system. As in any town, um, when you turn the faucet on or, or flush or toilet, the, the wastewater goes away, goes somewhere. Um, critical to that is making sure that the collection system is uh, secure, it's solid, it's uh, reliable. We find that there's some areas in the town where we've had uh, wastewater management issues, where some of the pipes are cracked and they were collapsed, and we've been going through and repairing them with our partner, the Group, to try and eliminate um, those issues in the collection system. So we, make sure, we want to make sure that all the components are protected for, from premature failure. Uh, we want to pro be proactive and have the capital plan address areas that we know are bad. And um, hopefully this will help reduce some of the costs. When you uh, have a break in a collection system and water gets in there, that's part of your bill that goes to the Sag Valley uh, Sewage Commission pay for that flow. And the more we tighten up the system, the more money we can save by making it uh, less of that extraneous flow getting to the treatment plant. And again, the chart that goes along with that. <coughs> the water meter replacement program. So what we want to do with this is improve water accountability using smart technology. We want to reduce the meter reading expenses we want to improve customer service. Now, how do you do that with a smart meter? Well, one of the things we've done in some of the other towns that we've worked in is we look at um, a customer's usage and determine if that customer is using more or less than what we would anticipate. In many instances, we find that there are leaks in a customer's home. In the past, you'd get a high bill, you would complain to the utility, something's wrong, um, but it would be sometimes 90 days, 100 days past when you got the water bill. We can look at your usage on a daily basis and determine you may have a potential leak, so we can provide customer service to you to help you mitigate that leak. Not only does it eliminate water loss, it also um, promotes conservation. Uh, 
it helps us pump water smarter, and it prepares Orange to become what we call a smart city. And the last thing it helps us do is uh, comply with the new uh, federal lead regulations and requirements. We can actually tell what this type service line is that comes into your home and if it needs to be replaced as part of the lead replacement program. Again, the chart of work. Um, the last thing is really utility infrastructure system optimization. This whole thing wraps around really cost effectiveness, making sure the city of Orange Township has a sustainable, reliable water and collection system over the long term. We're going to optimize the system. We're going to enact smart solutions so that we can really provide you with state-of-the-art service going forward. And that's pretty much our goal. There's a chart for that one because we'll have to fill those numbers in. So that's those are the five main ones that were on the, on the topic for tonight. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can certainly bring them up or give them to us in writing and try to answer the best we can. We're going to open up the floor for questions and answers. For questions, uh, we're going to allow each person two minutes to ask their question and we get an answer. You're talking so, about citizens? Yes, okay. for the citizens. Does anyone have any questions? Um, my name is Jeffrey Feld. Again, I want to thank the presentation, especially with a handout. Will there be some kind of printout for the debt service, what we're talking about? Because I know it was left blank about what we're charting, because later on tonight, tonight you're going to be adopt, uh, considering two ordinances, I think, on first reading. And I think we sort of need to have more backup, because that ties into like the applications that are being filed about as a result of what we, what we, we know we have to do what we have to do. And the question is, do certain people, you, I mean, this, this is a corrective curing party, but certain people missed the boat before, but we need to also understand as a result of all the needs we have, how much our net debt is going up and what is going to be the <coughs> debt service and how we're going to pay it down. I think that information has not been given to, to the people, and I think the public needs to understand how much we're talking about a capital project, basically probably in excess of $20 million to do this and what the cost is going to be to the public. So I think the public needs to know what the impact of this, plus the $9 million bond ordinance for the, for the um, hospital, what is the impact of taxpayers' is. Yeah. So um, that's a fair question um, and observation. Um, but I want to separate uh, the two items, and I'll explain why. Um, we have to look at the water, stormwater, and sewer utility separately from capital improvement bonds uh, for uh, other general municipal purposes. Because the water and sewer and stormwater is operated as a self-liquidating utility, which means that whenever we issue debt or incur operational expenses, the revenues generated by that utility must exceed by at least $1 on an annual basis. Um, any of your costs and expenses for that year. Um, so what we did in analyzing this uh, is um, we ran some scenarios for the $30 million, and we decided to split um, the authorizations, not only because we're not going to need to take all the money down at the same time, but it also helps us to um, stage whatever rate increases might be necessary to pay for the capital improvements. If you factored in, um, and some of these uh, charts are actually in our local finance board application, and I'll make that available to the public and put it up on the website. Um, if you factor in the $30 million, um, you're going to need to have a rate increase spread out over a number of years that aggregates approximately 20% in order to be able to pay for capital improvements. That does not take into account um, any grants that we may get um, or any subsidized loans that we may get from the uh, infrastructure bank. So assuming that we qualify for um, an iBank loan uh, where you only have to pay 
interest on half of uh, the uh, interest accrued, or 50% of the interest, um, the numbers will come down. Um, and obviously, if we're qualifying for grants, we will, we'll, we'll take those grants and pay off the debt uh, immediately. So we're still in the process of finalizing sort of the long-term water capital plan. Um, but the local finance board application that we have filed estimates approximately $20 million to be spent in the next three and a half to four years. Um, and um, I'll provide that, put it up on the website, and I can provide copies. On the capital side, which we separate uh, or look at separately because uh, when you issue a uh, a bond or a bond anticipation note for a municipal capital purpose, that definitely is secured by um, the full faith and credit of the municipality, which includes the taxing power. Um, right now, uh, we're looking at a $9 million ordinance um, for capital needs. Um, we will do a separate presentation on um, that, but just to run through Basically, we're looking at almost $3 million for fire trucks. Um, these are frontline assets in public safety. Um, our fire trucks uh, need to be replaced. Um, those fire trucks that were acquired in 2014 will be bumped back down into second position or third position. The other huge expenditure out of the nine million um, is 2.7 million on a citywide public safety camera plan. Um, that's all equipment, installation, um, including the communications center. Um, and what that camera system will allow is uh, close to 100% real time coverage streamed immediately to the communication center in real time in the police station and will help us deploy assets um, in uh, our effort to reduce crime. Um, the um, camera system also is hooked up to a technology called Shot Spotter. Um, so if there is a gun discharged, um, that will be picked up by the camera system, automatically send an immediate alert uh, to the dispatch center, which means you don't have to wait for a phone call, um, and you can dispatch your response to the area where that gunshot was recorded virtually in real time. These camera systems are also will be tied to our automated license plate readers um, so that all of the technology that we put in place is, f is fed in real time to the new communication center. And we're working on an intermediate term plan with the state where we can consolidate dispatch services, um, which is where all this communication equipment is housed. Um, and we're looking at some shared services with neighboring municipalities on dispatch um, and a couple of other items. So the, the $9 million bond ordinance we will have a separate discussion about. Um, we have looked at whether or not refunding on an, either a taxable or tax exempt basis of some of our outstanding debt made any sense. The state requires that you achieve a 3% present value savings in any refunding. Um, we're not able to meet that uh, threshold. Uh, we're looking at approximately 1.76%. We will have a discussion with the state to determine whether or not they think that's uh, valuable enough uh, to approve, um, but it doesn't meet the threshold that they've set in their guidelines. So um, we are also in a very favorable uh, interest rate market for bonds <coughs> and notes. So we're going to try and get to the market as quickly as possible because we haven't seen interest rates this low in a number of, of years. Are there any other questions from the audience? Good evening. Good evening. I am Linval James, 738 Irving Torres, Orange, New Jersey. Just a simple question. I noticed that we have the plan for the water, 
and things like that. I noticed when I move into this area, we have some plans and was going very good. And for some reason, every time we have the plans, they change to another company or something. This is definite, we definite, Orange definite going to have this control with this water plan? Yes. Any other questions? Um, I'm do a I, just, I just would like to say one thing. Thank you for allowing us to make Hold on, I'm not, we oh, don't think of shit. I need to, okay, I need to. <laughs> we got here. Yeah. Yeah. I need to now go to the council to see if any council members has questions. Council president? Um, Councilman Coley, hold on, Councilman. We, Councilman Coley had his hand up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess this is for the uh, BA and for Kit. I think I mentioned to you before, BA, about the long-term uh, goal and plan of our water infrastructure, um, as far as like being in position um, to reduce our um, emergency water in interconnect and possibly move into a position where we could um, uh, be a water provider again. Um, is that our long-term uh, goal here? Because if it isn't, I think we're just throwing out wills. Well, no. I, I, there's a couple things. One, in response to um, the notice of violation from DEP, we had to do an assessment of the wells. Um, and we had a, a hydrogeologist come in and measure the well fields. And the well fields have the same capacity as they had in the early 60s. Um, so some of the wells need to be rehabilitated in order to be able to pump um, at a higher rate per minute. Um, we're working, that's part of this plan. Some of the wells need to be reopened um, that had been closed, um, and we can do that uh, also as part of this plan, and that will provide us with resiliency because we can then turn to those wells if we have to take down another well and still pump the same amount of water. The third thing um, that we've done is we've entered into a contract, as the council's aware, for the standby bulk purchase water um, with East Orange Water Commission. Um, and although we don't anticipate that we will need that on a long-term basis, um, it does give us the resiliency and the capacity that DEP wants to see. So, we are also going to build out another connection on the Montclair border so that we also have redundancy and resiliency. And at some point, we're going to evaluate, and when I say at some point, it's not that it's that far into the future, but we're going to evaluate the use of the reservoir um, and some of our other tied in water assets in the South Mountain Reservation to determine whether or not it makes sense to bring that back as an active water source, not only for backup, but also potentially for sale. And when you say build out with Montclair, what um, water company or water provider will we be building that out to and with? Truly, the, the connection on the Montclair border is only gonna cost about $100,000 to build out. And what it enables us to do is it enables us to enter into an agreement with the town of Kearney um, for excess water that they have that they're not using at a substantially reduced rate. So that's a, a Kearney built out? It's actually built out uh, to Montclair, and it connects through the North Jersey District Water Supply lines uh, over to Kearney and through Montclair. So the easiest place for us to tap it out was on the Montclair border. Okay. I, I see a picture. Council Thank you. Coley, you Councilman Williams. Thank you, Council President. So to expound on um, Council and Coley's, uh, Interconnect is always going to be a part of uh, the water program. Yeah. From a redundancy and resiliency, and okay. uh, we just have to have that. Okay. But is that standard state requirement? Well, the state requirement is they want you to have redundancy and resiliency. Okay. If um, we got it through another renewable water source, that would be fine. Mm -hmm. But the facilities are not in the condition where you can count that yet. Okay. So 
as you know, um, a resolution will be coming forth as a result of people, persons with pools, and that, so in this capital plan, um, and having conversations back and forth with the legislative research officer and Kit, um, it's gonna require step one, two, three before you can actually get to that, and it might need to be some manual things done to make that, so I guess, do we know how many pool, how many homes in the um, city have pools? Um, I'm sure we can find out. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. So we identified all. We know. Okay. So we. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. So, so, kid, do you want to come up to the? Do you want to come up? Okay. All right. <clears throat> so that because it's a hit or miss, and I understand that some municipalities do have this legislation, but we're not quite ready there because I. As I understand, it needs like a special meter or something? Well, we can do it two, two ways. The, the biggest question has been with filling the pools. Mm -hmm. That I, I can actually, we can, what we did recently was we looked at previous bills from the quarter. Mm -hmm. We looked at the summer bills where they filled up in the 1st of March, 1st of April, and were able to tell how much water they used extra mm -hmm. based on the last three years. Mm -hmm. The biggest question is the sewer bill. And so for the two people that put in for the sewer credits, mm -hmm. we just went back through and basically did that, looked at both sides of it, what are the normal use based on the 12 months, and then gave them the credit for the sewer. And that's because other people didn't know. So I'm ter in terms of getting a process and procedure in place, that's what, so how are we going to? Yeah. So that when we changed the water rates, we restructured how we were billing for sewer. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't take into account the fact that people had swimming pools. Mm -hmm. So consequently, the charges related to their sewer bills were disproportionate to their water use. Right. And we can correct that, but we have to do it by ordinance through two meetings. Oh, and but I, the, as I understand, are we going to do it manually or do we need to meet it? That's what I'm asking. I mean, 17 pools seems like we can do it. I think we can do it manually. Manually, okay, so to, we can go forward, okay. That's, and in light of everything in the news and everything as we do infrastructure and everything, we know that we have homes with lead pipes. Mm -hmm. um, and now that there's sort of a process out there and, and possibly funding, um, are we in front of this so that we could, and do we know what homes or is? So one of the ordinances that we decided to put into 2020 was the lead pipe ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason being is that there's a lot of talk at the state and federal level mm -hmm. about providing some source of funding um, to do lead pipe remediation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like to kind of let that play out a little bit on, before we actually do the ordinance and set up the program. Mm -hmm. So we have not, our testing indicates that, you know, we're in a very good position. Mm -hmm. um, we know that there are some lead service lines that are gonna need to be addressed by homeowners. Mm -hmm. We've identified as many as we can. Mm -hmm. um, we'll identify the rest through the meter program. Mm -hmm. um, and we will put a funding mechanism in place in 2020 to address lead pipes but I'd first like to hear from the state legislature and the and Congress as to what they're going to do. Okay. And those discussions are ongoing and on the federal level are likely to be addressed in the upcoming uh, budget. Okay. And we haven't identified all the homes. We just know that. Okay. No. Okay. No, but we can gather from homes ages, ages. Okay. that mm -hmm. there is a likelihood that there are a lot of lead pipes. And those that haven't pulled permits Correct. to replace. Okay. And thank you, Council President. But um, Business Administrator, even if you gauge that from the home's ages, how would you know how many of them have not already replaced their pipes? Well, we'd have to do a review. That's one of the issues mm -hmm. because we have found some pipe replacements that should have been done in a different way. Um, so uh, as we do the meter program, uh, which is the front end of this capital plan, that meter program will enable us to actually get in and identify every single lead service line in the city to every building that has a meter. Yeah, when you say lead pipe, are you talking about the part that is inside the house or the one that goes from the house to the connection in the street? It's both, actually. Mm. Okay. 
Council President, if I may. Because we yes. can see it coming out the wall um, into the house, so we know what that side is, and then we can see what's in the house. So we'll be able to identify both. But the, if there's some relief for replacing lead pipes, is that going to include them from the street to the house, and the owner is going to be responsible for those inside the house, or is it going to do both? Well, the way the iBank works right now is if you were to take money from the iBank for a lead pipe replacement program, the portion from our main or from the inside of the curb to the house and inside the house would be the responsibility of the homeowner and we would have to do a special assessment and recoup those funds. Half, right? But for, uh, for those of us that pay that monthly, what is that, yearly? Monthly insurance. For the pipes? Yeah, that doesn't have that anything to do. Would that be covered under that insurance? That doesn't yeah. have anything to do with um, the corrosion inside of a lead pipe. That's uh, an insurance program for service interruptions. So if your pipe breaks, um, they would come in and replace it from the curb into the house. With? With pipe. with pipe that actually it, is not lead. Yes. Right. Okay. Mm. All right. Presumably copper. <laughs> Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Council President. Um, I, I see in one of the slides they had a list of 11 uh, violations. Uh, uh, some of these are, 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 are old, right? They're old violations that have been, uh, that have not been addressed over a period of years. Um, let's just say that they took a number of years to accrue. All right. And, and as the projects, uh, you may find more violations or at least find things that you might have to remediate that would be violations if you... I think that we are uh, in a position where we can say that there may always be a violation. Okay. So, for example, yes. we have recently discovered uh, or been notified that in a couple of places, uh, sanitary sewer lines were being discharged into open waterways. Um, we've addressed that. But those kinds of things can happen on an ongoing basis. Um, what I think we've addressed in this plan quite um, aggressively is the response to the notice of violation from the DEP with regard to capacity and permitting and resiliency. Thank you. Uh, I note how Mr. Ludington mentioned there are more than 100 people currently serving Warren's Water Service. And I'm wondering, as we make these, uh, um, I guess, make these improvements, uh, how many are required uh, to maintain our water at a certain point? Because I see there is some workforce and training part of the uh, infrastructure challenges. Is there some anticipated number? Yeah, I mean, as <clears throat> I like to uh, say, a lot like the police and fire department, the water department's a 24-7 operation. Yes. Um, <laughs> and uh, just ask the people who work on it because they get the phone calls in the middle of the night about water main breaks, you know, flooding, et cetera, sore backups. Um, so when you add all that up, right, there's a lot of people working on this system. Um, and uh, I don't expect um, to have the kinds of violations or the kinds of emergency responses that we have now uh, once we um, implement and execute on the capital plan. We're always going to have ongoing maintenance. There's always going to be issues with an aging infrastructure system. But it should, um, this should address a lot of things. And then if we end up with a, an appropriate maintenance plan, which is also part of the asset management plan, we should be ahead of the game. Do we anticipate um, in, in, an increase in municipal employees uh, to serve the water system? No. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Councilman Council Johnson. President, one quick question for the BA and, uh, and, the, and the water team. Uh, on, on the water uh, meter replacement program, now that we're doing all this bonding and so forth, and, you know, we're either going to go big or go home. Okay, I'm feeling this thing. Uh, the water meter program, after all said and done, when we replace the meters, there's not going to be any additional cost to the homeowner to get the meter replaced. No. Um, the only additional cost that ultimately may be um, identified would be 
when we identify the lead service lines through the meter replacement program, the homeowners are going to have to address that at some point mm -hmm. in terms of whatever financing mechanism we put in place. But, but the, but but the, the meters new meters themselves, themselves are on the system. And yeah, it's getting paid for through all the infrastructure bonding and so forth. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Any other council members have any questions? Okay, we're going to move on. Now, Mr. Ludington, you had. Well, I was just going to thank you, Council President, and say that um, I've, I've been working in this industry for a number of years, and I want to credit. Mr. Our... Ludington, you have to come to the mic. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought mm -hmm. my <laughs> she has to pick you up. I appreciate that. I just wanted to compliment you guys. I've worked in this industry for a number of years, and the, the aggressive stance that you've taken and the additional money you've put in already to provide the citizens of this town with, with fire protection and new water mains, it's a pl I applaud you. You've done, you guys are doing a great job, and the team that we've assembled on your behalf, I think, is doing a fantastic job, too. So congratulations to you guys. I hope we go forward with this because we, we really anticipate exciting things that happen for Orange. Thanks. Thank you very much, and thank you for the presentation. Um, we're going to... You ready, Council Brother? So, um, for the record, Councilman Coley arrived at 717. Councilwoman Summers Johnson arrived at 727. And Gracia R. Montillas, the city attorney, arrived at 742. Before we proceed, uh, is there anything you guys want to take down now oh, or yeah. shut off? Sir. Give us a couple of minutes. Okay, we all set. Uh, <coughs> Councilman Williams, which one do you want to do first? Oh, we're going to do them back to back. Okay. Captain Padilla. Chief. Oh, Doc. Chief. 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 <laughs> I, I made him captain. <laughs> he would not get up. <laughs> Chief Padilla. Who's that guy? Who's that here? <laughs> Chief Padilla, can you join us at the um, podium, please, sir? You sure can. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm write it a hundred more times. I'm write it a hundred times. It wouldn't, um, we have to get the county to read the machine. They have to open it up. They open it on Friday. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Okay, guys, we're going to do this quietly. 
This is a resolution celebrating National Hispanic Heritage Month and honoring Deputy Chief Elvin Padilla, Jr. Whereas each year America observes National Hispanic Heritage Month from September 15th to October 15th by celebrating the histories, cultures, and contributions of American citizens whose ancestors came from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. And whereas the observation started in 1968 as Hispanic Heritage Week under President Lyndon Johnson and was expanded by President Ronald Reagan in 1988 to cover a 30-day period. I'm not going to read everything. I'm going to read specific things. Whereas since its founding, our nation has drawn strength from the diversity of our people with faith and passion, a sturdy work ethic, and profound devotion to family. Hispanics have helped, every, have helped carry forward our legacy as a vibrant beacon of opportunity for all. Whether their ancestors have been here for generations or they are among the newest member of our American family, they represent many countries and cultures, each adding their own distinct and dynamic perspective to our country's story and... Whereas Deputy Chief Elvin Padilla, Jr. serves at the Orange Fire Department, and is currently assigned to the administrative division. He started his career with the OFD in June 23, 1988. He has served as president of FMBLA Local 10 and is as a FMBA union delegate. And whereas Deputy Chief Elvin Padilla has received many citations of valor, including was one for successfully uh, recitating a gentleman while traveling on the Garden State Parkway. This act of bravery earned him several local and state accolades, including the highest honor, receiving a city proclamation, naming March 16th in the city as Elvin Padilla Day. And whereas after 23 years as a fire member, Deputy Chief Elvin Padilla was promoted to the rank of fire captain on November 31st, 2012. Notably, he is the second Hispanic to be promoted to the rank of captain in OFD. As a captain, he served as OFD's training officer. He was instrumental in securing modern training equipment, which was beneficial to the membership in preparing a better serve, to better serve the community. And whereas in 2018, Deputy Chief Elvin Padilla was assigned to the position of the Orange Office of Emergency Management, Deputy Coordinator of Operation. That's a long. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. There he is responsible for preparing and updating all emergency operational plans, while also, also along what, with working closely with the community and private businesses. He closely monitors any pending storms that affect the city's daily operation. He assists the city in preparing documentation necessary to obtain any state and federal funding. And whereas on July 1st, 2019, Deputy Chief Padilla was promoted to the rank of Deputy Fire Chief. As Deputy Fire Chief, he was placed in charge of procurement, fleet management, and building maintenance. Further, he has always made himself available while, cap while captain and now was Deputy Fire Chief to be reassigned to operations dis division to fill in when vacancies are available due to short staffing. And whereas Deputy Chief Padilla was born in the city of Newark to Elvin Padilla Sr. and Eva Padilla while living on Fairmont and Springfield Avenue in the heart of the city of Newark. His family experienced the riot of the 60s. As a result, his family decided to move to Irvington. He subsequently attended and graduated from Frank H. Morrell High School, a.k.a. Irvington High. Therefore, there he met his high school sweetheart. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Who he would go, who he go on to marry. In 1984, he and his wife moved to the city of Orange for a job opportunity. They currently reside in the city of West Orange with two of their children, Elvin Daniel, and Elania. Eliana. Ooh, <laughs> <Anani. laughs> <Ooh>, Anani. <laughs> Baby girl. That's what. Really <laughs> their oldest daughter, um, their oldest daughter Priscilla, now resides in Florida with her husband Martin Amador and son Giovanni. And whereas Deputy Chief Adelia loves the Orange community and he is always prepared and available to serve the people of Orange. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Orange Township honors Deputy Chief Elvin Padilla Jr. and expresses its appreciation for his role in helping the City of Orange, keeping the City of Orange safe. The City Council of the City of Orange Township further celebrates National Hispanic Heritage Month and the many contributions of Hispanic Americans. The City of Orange, the City Council of the City of Orange Township 
encourages the citizens of the city of Orange Township to observe Nas National Hispanic Heritage Month with appropriate programs, ceremonies, and activities. Now, do we surprise you with your white Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to <clears throat> present, but one thing I want to say, um, with fire and police, there are so many things that you that they do that you cannot put it in a body of work. And particularly, if you remember, during Hurricane Sandy, um, Deputy Chief and I were in Bloomfield, and we were at the state diner. And if you remember, remember. somebody um, passed out, and I think they were having a stroke or something right in front, and he just happened to be standing there. And him standing there, as Captain Anderson would always say, you know, you do the breathing act, one, two, three, <laughs> and it makes a difference. But his standing there, and I think the gentleman <clears throat> got back in contact with him later on that day, it saved his life. So everything that they do, it, it cannot be put into a body of paper, but we know that you and your red camera does not a lot. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it, everyone in this council chamber, um, especially the guys behind me. You know, this wouldn't be possible without a team behind you. So one individual cannot do it alone in public safety. So I applaud the guys behind me and those who are not here. You have a wonderful, uh, a great fire department. I, I always ask you to support them and tolerate our, our, our complaints, but we mean well and we love our community. And for my wife, <laughs> I've always said that the way you stayed married is communications. She kind of ruined that today. <laughs> um, it's a lo that's longevity to marriage, is communicate and work things out and move on and just keep doing what you're doing in life. But greatly appreciate it. Thank you. I spoke to you 100 times, too. You didn't tell me anything either. Also, thank you. Director, thank you very much. Appreciate Captain, it. Thank you. Introduce the rest of the family. Uh oh, <laughs> this is to oh, my wife. Or my family, or my extended family. No, your family family. Well, my family is my wife, Olga Padilla. All right? She's an implant from Puerto Rico. We're trying to figure out how to send her back. She don't want to. <laughs> That's love. My, my daughter, Ileana Anani Padilla. My college, my, my, my pride and joy right now. And my son, proud of my son, uh, NGIT graduate. Uh, he's a 3, 3D animator, a, a wonderful kid. I love him to death. And my baby in, in Florida. So, hell, my grandbaby. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And now we want to um, call up Captain Anderson. Jamie Anderson. Captain, bring your wife with you. You gonna avoid him, man? Bring your wife with you. She wanna take pictures. We gotta get somebody to take pictures. She wanna take pictures. Plus, his son is standing next to he Captain Padilla, right? Get over there with your dad. <laughs> So this is a resolution honoring James Anderson for his service at the Orange Fire Department. Whereas Captain James Anderson moved to Orange, New Jersey at the age of 10 years old, he was educated in Orange Public School District. He attended Park Avenue School, Central Middle School, Orange Middle School, and Orange High School. He graduated from Orange High School in 1960, I mean 1980. <laughs> <laughs> and whereas Captain James Anderson went on to Essex County College for one year before joining the United States Army. After completing his military service, he returned to Orange and worked various jobs, including doing security at Orange High School under Al Rosino? Renoso. Renoso. Because it's not spelled right. Yeah, I'm Mr. Renoso. Al Renoso, he went on to take the fire test in 1988 and was hired in the City of Orange Department of Public Works in 1990 under Mayor Robert Brown. They forgot about your DJ, and he was also. Sorry, <laughs> okay, you'll do it, okay. Whereas Captain James Anderson began his career as a firefighter for the Orange Fire Department in 1992 following his appointment by Mayor Robert Brown and... And whereas Captain James Anderson served the Orange Fire Department for 25 years, advanced into the rank 
captain in 2013 under the administration of Mayor Dwayne D. Warren Esquire, and whereas Captain James Anderson enjoyed serving the community through his service at the Orange Fire Department and considers his career as part of the Orange Fire Department as time well spent. And whereas throughout his 25 year career with the Orange Fire Department, Captain James Anderson earned the respect of his peers, his constituents, and that of the population he served. He will be sorely missed by his co workers, residents, and many friends he met along the way. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Orange Township hereby honors and thanks Captain James Anderson for his 25 years of diligent and steadfast service with the City of Orange Fire Department and wishes him a happy retirement. Yes. I'm never speaking. <laughs> Few people lied to me today. <laughs> but that's okay. This 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 is I can't cry because I was at a um men's retreat all weekend. Um uh, and I I got no more water in me. So <laughs> Amen. Um Thank you. Thank you, Director. You had to know. And I just spoke to you. <laughs> well, as, oh, before I get to this, I want to say when you guys were talking about the water, I think Councilwoman Easton, you were the only one here. Uh, whoever was the water department, whoever was handling the water then, I had a problem at my house. They were digging up in front of my house. You remember that? Yeah, and they messed up my water line. And I came here and pitched one. And, uh, and led by Council, Councilwoman Eason, she forced them to change my whole water line. So I don't have a lead line. So it's copper. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I don't know. This is, this is uh, I can't think of a better career I could have had in my life. Uh, I tried many things in my life. And, you know, as with a lot of young black men, you know, like women make up their minds sooner what they want to be in life. Uh, guys, it takes a little while. We try a little of this, try a little of that. But um, I landed in the perfect spot. God brought me to the perfect spot. I want to thank if Jason is still here because he actually prompted me to take the fire test in 88. He, he prompted me to do it. And that's been my man since he was about 300 pounds so <laughs> and uh he's been you know he's dj with me since we were we were little kids and um e even though in the you know the early 90s you know there's there's a few that didn't want me there and you know i i endured so um i thank you i just want people to know that the fire service is an honorable service uh these men and women uh, a lot of times go far beyond the scope of their, you know, what they're supposed to do to help people. And, you know, people don't usually appreciate that unless their house is on fire, you know, and they do so much more than that, that uh, the fire service and the police department, you know, and they, you know, all you, all you hear is the bad stuff in the news. Uh, but I just want to thank you. Thank you so much. Before you all move, I just want to give the council a chance to say something that they have a, if they would like to say congratulations or sure. just to. Uh, I graduated with that guy. <laughs> wow. Um, it's been a long time, both you guys. Um, just, I don't, know, I don't know what happened to the years. The years just Huge. flew past and, and, they, and they're still going fast at a at a high rate of speed. I've been retired five years and it doesn't seem like it. You know, but um, congratulations. Thank you. Um, I wish both of you nothing um, but the best for you and your families. Um, health, peace, and strength. Thank you. Sounds That's like what John we need, Cornelius. health, yes. <laughs> In that order. 
Yes. Pe Jones. Peace and love and thanks to uh, the uniform service personnel in here, but especially uh, the, the captain and the deputy chief who've been honored in our chamber. You know, I, I really appreciate how you uh, uh, wear the uniform. You guys are the outward expression of Orange, New Jersey, as, as the few who actually wear that on your shoulder. And um, thanks so much for taking the uh, responsibility and, and living up to the obligation uh, of your oath. Thank you. Please take care. Enjoy your retirement, Thank bro. Thank you so much. All right. Councilman Jones. Yeah, I'll be quick, man, because uh, I'm, I'm so proud of our uh, police and fire department here in Orange. And since I've been on the council, I've seen the growth all throughout the city. Even we talk this water stuff. A lot of people <coughs> just don't know of the fantastic stuff that we're doing internally in Orange is growing. And it takes leadership like you two guys, man. One retiring and one still hanging in there with us, man. But it's the leadership. And you didn't have to flaunt it. You'll be I, fishing I, with me soon. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I actually, I actually see it in the body of work that you guys, and I see, uh, see it in the, in the, in the youngsters coming up behind you, that they know that uh, they're, they're the next generation of leaders in the fire department, and we're so proud of you guys for just being there for us, all the time. Thank you. Councilwoman Jamie Simmons. I got six. I can say it. Congratulations on your award. Um, you know how I feel about firefighters. I'm married to one. Um, <laughs> but it's such a great uh, career. I push it in my classroom all the time. You know, as much as I push college, we, we definitely need firefighters, especially for our women. Um, and I can say for the time that I've been in Orange, the fire department now correctly reflects the city of Orange. And I'm starting to see more people um, from Orange, and I think for the Orange High School students, it's like it's something that they can see. Now, for Jamie, it's hilarious because when I was in high school, he was our custodian during the day. <laughs> At night, he was the DJ you had to have. You had to have. There's like, if he was playing, you knew, you know. So, but it, and then when he became a fireman, it was just, for me, it was like he's worked in every aspect in the city, but it tells me again that you know, it's orange, you bleed orange. So, and then my cameraman, who I follow, because he has all these trinkets in that red camera. Um, but I think through those pictures, the residents get to see what you do. Because if they don't see, you know, your posts on Facebook and social media, sometimes they don't understand all of the stuff you do. And honestly, if I wasn't married to a firefighter, I wouldn't know all the details mm -hmm. because I don't, mm -hmm. you just don't know. Mm -hmm. um, until like today, he got off work at like eight and then at 11, there was a huge fire in Irvington. And sad to say, I was just like, whew, you know, he's off. But as a wife of a fire, I mean, you know, every time you go into a fire, we're always scared for you. So for all the firefighters in the back, and over here, you're always in our prayers. And as council, I'm pretty sure we're going to try our best to make sure you have everything you need because we want you all to be able to go home to your families. Thank you. No, but she wanted to say something. No, uh, uh, Major, uh, I just want to say thank you to each one of you. Um, to Jamie, <laughs> it's been a pleasure working with you. You were always so kind, but you are so truthful mm -hmm. in helping newcomers oh, to yeah. Orange. Because I was a newcomer in 2012, and I did things, but I would call Jamie, or he would call me and say, you need to do this, or you need to do that. And I thank you, and I appreciate that for you. Um, to Chief Padilla, my granddaughter want me to tell you she is so glad that you are one of Santa's helpers. <laughs> she does not know what to do. <laughs> That's from my granddaughter, but from my family. You know, our prayers are always go out to you. When that truck goes down there, drive down Oakwood Avenue, I'm always praying because I don't know what you're going right. into. And I thank you for the leadership under Director Douglas, um, all of the men and women of the fire department. So I just want to say thank you. It's, it's amazing for youngsters to see in the city of Orange that we had Jamie Anderson. He was a custodian. Mm -hmm. He was a mm -hmm. DJ That's to right. see. And That's now, right. you know, he's oh, a retired work. public works <laughs> and he's a retired fireman. And then Captain Chief Padilla. I'm, 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 I'm sorry to stop. <laughs> but you were just here and you went through the ranks. And it's beautiful to let our youngsters see mm -hmm. um, men like you. Too. And thank you all so much. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I also want to say congratulations, Captain Pordee. I think we aged together. There you go again. <laughs> <laughs> We've been there. <laughs> Chief Pordee. Yeah. You need the whole team. We, we started out young together, and look at us now. So congratulations, and you deserve the honor and the recognition. And to your family, God bless him, keep him, keep him. He's a good guy. <laughs> and to my beloved Jamie, I think my house was the training ground for the GJ. He converted my back room to the GJ Center. And Frank is grinning back there because he was part of that. But, uh, I come home many a days pulling my yard and wonder what the neighbors were thinking because the music was so loud. <laughs> so they would have all their equipment up there learning how to DJ. My, my, my uh, sons gave up after you left the group, so <laughs> they, they sort of hung up their no, DJing God. shoes. I, <laughs> I know. So, but I want to say I'm proud of you. Congratulations. <clears throat> this is one of my sons. Right. So uh, I, I, I claim all of you guys, so you all know that. I think you all know me. So keep up the good work. And I think last night, you guys, where's the, uh, is it Captain or Deputy Chief Long? I think you guys might have saved some lives last night and Washington died. And the guy called me panicking because his, his uh, fire alarm wouldn't stop. And I could hear it in the background, just chirping, chirping, chirping. I said, take the battery out of the thing. He said, he said I did. And I had to put it back because it never stopped. So I called, I, called, I called the fire department. I said, please go over and see what's going on at that house. And come to find out, it was, carbon it was the carbon dioxide. That, so they had to call public search. So thank you for that because I think otherwise they wouldn't have known what to do. So thank you guys for always being prompt and on the job and going in and taking care of what never needs to be taken care of. We, I know that the job is dangerous, and I pray all the time. So thank you, thank you, thank you to each of you. And keep up the good work and keep working together as a team and loving and helping each other. That's what really matters. All right? Thank you. And, and so... The disclaimer is that the views of council president are not necessarily the views of the prior department. <laughs> so don't take the don't take the batteries out. Thank you. Thank you. So, so before and you know the words that I have are all in the um, in the presentation, and I still call you all the time. So you know, and um, I don't think you're going anywhere. So you'll always be here. Um, but director, do you have anything to say before we do yes, the picture? Anything, sir? <coughs> So um, just briefly, um, for the five years I've been here, it's been a pleasure working with Captain Anderson and Deputy Chief Padilla. Um, they helped shape this department as it is now and, and still evolving. Um, we actually, through attrition, we have a very young department, um, and a lot of accomplishments come from these two. Um, one from Captain Anderson, just strength and resolve and just family. And Deputy Chief Padilla, he actually gave a lot when it comes down to taking care of the business of the department, assist us with the goal of pushing this department forward. I would definitely miss you, Jamie. Um, our, um, our, um, <laughs> our discussions, our deep discussions, our loud, loud discussions. Um, yes. um, we call those discussions. But, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, but I've learned a lot about this department, and a lot of it came from Captain Anderson. And as far as Elvin, you're still with me. Um, we still have a lot to accomplish and a, a department to build up for the future and um, forward. Um, congratulations to the both of you. Thank you very much for your service and um, let business to be continued. Can I say one more thing, please? Uh, a lot of times when you, when you, I'm sure you all know, when, you, when you're growing up and you're doing things, you don't know who you affect. And I've always felt that God let me here. I've always loved Orange. I still love Orange. I, always, I only want the best for Orange. And, but while I was doing all these things, uh, even through the fire service, I never, you never know that your children are watching you and stuff, you know, stuff like that. And I was so proud when my son joined the fire department, so proud when my other son joined the police, joined the police department. department, you know. I just do things because it should be done. And, you know, I'm just going and uh, I'm, I'm once again, you know, he owed me money, but uh, <laughs> 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 but, 
Somebody, somebody said I ain't never gonna get it. So it was him. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Padilla or Mrs. Anderson, did y'all want to say anything? If not, you're... Um, I don't have the gift of gab like my father. Uh, I stuttered when I was little, so this is even worse for me right now. Uh, but knowing that all those 3 a.m.s where I'd wake up and he's out the door and, uh, you know, knowing that it was all worth it, uh, he's still here, he's still... Kicking it, uh, still dances too. So his uh, his, his busted <laughs> his busted knee hasn't stopped them. The roof collapsing on him didn't stop him. I mean, he's just a tank, and uh, just proud of him. That's really all I got to say. I'm not a public speaker, but I just want to say congratulations to both of them. Very That's proud my wife. of them. Oh, oh Jamie Anderson's wife. Oh. <laughs> That's, your, That's your name. Jamie <laughs> no, Trisha Anderson. Yeah. I'm very proud of him. And he's such a beautiful person. When we had the CPR class, he was so nice to everyone that was attending. I thank him and congratulations. And thank you to my husband. I'm so happy for him. And just seeing everyone here, the support is beautiful. And again, just thank you all. This is my adopted daughter. Yes, this is my dad. So I'm just up here to say that I'm very proud of him. Glad of, you know, meeting him and him taking me underneath his wing. And he did touch, he touched everybody in the firehouse, no matter what. He's been there for me through thick and thin. If it wasn't for him and Chief Padilla, I wouldn't even be here. They know what I went through. Chief Padilla helped me when certain things was going on. You know what I'm talking about. And so has Captain Anderson. So I just want to tell them congratulations on behalf of the Orange Fire Department. And that's it. And while you're standing here, since you're standing here, you have to let everybody know who you are. Oh, I am Captain Monique Allwood. <laughs> the, first, the first female. Thank you, 
Council members, is there any items on the agenda you wish to discuss? <laughs> Council President? Yes, Councilman Williams. Um, just for clarity, um, tonight on first reading is a capital um, acquisition um, through you to the, uh, Mr. Harwood. Can you just briefly go, so the total is, and can you just briefly, and I know you're reducing it, can you just briefly go over that? Okay, so ordinance 51 2019 is a bond ordinance to provide. 52, we on 52. Re, well, I was, the one that I reduced was 51. Yeah, that's the one. No, I'm on 52, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. So ordinance 52 2019 mm -hmm. is a bond ordinance for various capital acquisitions and improvements, mm -hmm. appropriating 9046000 and authorizing the issuance of 8611000 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 52 includes, uh, as I mentioned uh, in response to a question earlier, mm -hmm. the purchase and installation of a citywide public safety camera system mm -hmm. at $2.5 million. Okay. And specifically, that's what a question I got received. Um, 2.5, that's citywide. Um, have we, what are you basing that number on? Uh, we mapped all of the locations. Mm -hmm priced all of the cameras, um, and also priced um, the uh, back end of the camera system, which is the monitors and everything that goes into the dispatch center. Okay. And does this include, like, warranty? Um? The camera system um, or the cameras that are being spec'd, they mm -hmm. have to be bid um, because they're not proprietary. Mm -hmm. um, there are... Uh, one of the issues is that we would like to go with a camera that is portable. Um, and by portable, I mean we can break it down within an hour and move it to somewhere else. Um, so, um, I mean, the pricing is, it's an estimate at this point, mm -hmm. but I think it, uh, I think it's a relatively good estimate based upon the cost of the cameras that we've been looking at. Mm -hmm. What drives the number is the, it, what drives the cost is the number of cameras okay. um, and the labor to install them and to do the electrical work. Mm -hmm. And also, um, and you said, you just mentioned breaking down. Are they going to be like the big bulky ones that transit use a little no. bit more? Now, these are, the, these are going to be very unobtrusive. Okay. All right. 
All right. The other major component mm -hmm. um, is in item H, mm -hmm. which is 2.9 million for the purchase of a standard fire engine, a mid-mount tower ladder, mm -hmm. and a rescue engine and related equipment for the fire department. Mm -hmm. That's what I mentioned before about um, the uh, replacing some of our frontline fire equipment. And the other major portion is the million, million 160, mm -hmm. um, which is improvements uh, to the uh, public works garage. Mm -hmm. um, it includes an exhaust system, um, a new roof, uh, the, uh, a new canopy, a truck wash, um, and uh, some additional improvements to the gating, um, as well as um, the uh, gasoline tanks, installation and security. And um, also received a question about Lincoln and South Center. So that resurfacing will be from, on the South Center side, will be from the South Orange Line to Main Street, and on the Lincoln Avenue side, from Main Street to Haywood. Yeah, I asked Mr. Mays to address it since he has those things okay. at his fingertips. Marty Mays, Director of okay. Planning and DPW. The dimensions for Lincoln, I believe, are from Central Avenue to Haywood, and South Center is from Central Avenue to the border. And so what about the, well, the Main Street to Central Avenue portion? That's the only portions we cover with those two. <coughs> okay. And including uh, handicap ramps. Okay. And um, also, Mr. Hartwell, one of the things that we had talked about is that in the event that um, we're able to apply uh, specific grants for each of these items, you want to discuss that? Sure, there's a provision in the ordinance that basically says that any grant funds that we receive will reduce the amount of the outstanding debt authorization. Did you say that earlier? Pardon? Didn't you say that earlier? Yeah. Okay. Thank I you. I thought I heard it before. <clears throat> Councilman, will you do finish? Yes. All right. Any other council members? Yeah, 55, uh, 2019. Um, are these um, rules? going to be posted um, in and within the um, skateboard park? Yes, there was. We reduced um, these rules to plain English mm -hmm. and um, gave the text for a sign, which Mr. Mays is taking care of the manufacturer of. Okay. And um, 338-2019, uh, Mr. B8, can you just give us uh, an update? On so this, please. We're going to hold this to the next meeting. Mm -hmm. We did have a meeting um, with the uh, bank mm -hmm. um, and the church. Mm -hmm. I believe that we will have a recommendation to deal with this situation, and I should have it by the uh, next meeting. Okay. All right. Councilman Culler, you're done? That's what I have for now. Any other Council members? President, Councilman you. Jackson? Yes, I have, sir. But I, I wanted to stay on 55 one time. Uh, I, I, I um, see in uh, 145, this is on the, one, the second page, uh, under 145-19, letter K. It, it talks about uh, uh, music. Uh, I, I understand they don't want to be a public nuisance, but it seems kind Excuse of- Excuse me. The amendment's on the desk. There's an yeah. amendment on, on your desk. desk. Oh, okay. I took that section out because- All right. Oh, there's a new one that addresses wonderful, letter K. Wonderful. Um, and what I also ask about is uh, each, which is letter L. Each user of the skate park should have personal identification. Um, I see that participants 10 years of age or under must be accompanied by a responsible adult. But uh, those who may be 11 to 18, are, are they required to have ID as well? I took L out too. L is out L also. Yeah. Review the new one that's on your desk. Oh, okay. Thank yeah, you. all of that has been eliminated. Well, let's move on to another one then. Uh, let's go to um, 51. It's just a language issue. I, I see that these are re addressing water, and I, don't, I was just wondering if we could put water in the actual title um, after the word, re um, before the word transmission, 
and the word distribution. So it would read bond ordinance providing for phase one of the rehabilitation and or redevelopment of water transmission mains, water or, and or water uh, distribution mains. Just to be clear, I see wells is inferred that, uh, uh, that, that it's water, but I just think it'd be more, more precise with the word water. Um, it, at 52, um, how, how are these uh, selected as priorities? I, I understand that some of them are long standing. Um, was there a lot of different ways that these were selected as priorities? Well, these it was projects? primarily done on the basis of submissions from department heads yes. um, and discussion among uh, the city's leadership group. All right. And to be fair, I had like final chopping. I understand. I'm uh, just wondering, the, the, I knew there was some process, I just was wondering what it was. Um, I, as 54, Ordinance 54-2019, um, regarding the special needs re registry, uh, is, is there a particular criteria regarding special needs and uh, how will it be verified prior to admission to the list? So um, this is a requirement that came into state law back in either 16 or 17 yes. that um, we never acted on. Um, actually, I think came before that. Um, there's a whole process for establishing the special needs registry. Um, and it's anyone who um, has any disability that would impede um, evacuation or flight. All right. Um, and so we have a good starting point, which is all the handicapped parking stickers that we've issued throughout the city. Um, but there may be other things. So there's a process that will go on in terms of how we construct the special needs registry. It's similar to a marketing effort. We're going to have to include some notifications within the next tax bill. We'll put something up on the website. We'll do a robocall. Um, we'll reach out to church and community groups to make sure that we get as robust a list as we can. All right. I just was wondering whether it, I see it, the administration doesn't think it need be um, uh, enumerated in the ordinance, but uh, through that process, I suppose people would be able to um, determine whether or not they fall and prove that they fall within that uh, special needs. Um, one other thing, on uh, Resolution 370-2019, uh, it is a, regarding the uh, bonds. I see uh, numbers one through five referring to different bond ordinances. Um, is it possible that we can identify the resolutions, I mean the ordinances uh, date? So they would be, for example, you know, 314-2018. Uh, um, in, in case someone would like to go back, they wouldn't have to do research. So for the first one, we identify what that ordinance number is and I'm going through that list. Do you want that in the resolution? So you want the ordinance, the ordinance number? With, 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 uh, yeah, they, 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 so that um, you know, they would know that if they want to go look at this ordinance to see what, it's act, what the language is, or it, it right. would just specify when this actually you know, uh, occurred, when this was actually uh, approved by the council. Joyce, do you have the ordinance numbers? I have to look them up. All right. Uh, I'll pull them yes. uh, in the next few minutes, and we'll add them before you uh, vote. OK, thank you very much. Um, I believe uh, 382. Let's see. Councilor Jackson, why are you looking? I, I just want to do a follow up on uh, the special needs one. Do yes. we have an inventory of all of the handicapped spots to see if they are still needed? We're in the process. I thought we'd have a report tonight, but we'll have it for the next meeting. Because yeah, I need to talk to you about whether on summer trip. Okay. But I'll give you the address the uh, residents are looking at because when a person if you do a handicapped spot when the person dies the spot is vacant because nobody else in the house has a decal that they can use that spot so we need to make sure we take it down okay that was exactly um yeah. the context in which it came up so yeah 
Wonderful. Uh, yes, Councilman Jackson, you have another one? Yes, I do. Thank you, Council President. Also, 381-2019, this is extending the uh, agreement between Orange and the Pulse Medical Transportation. Mm -hmm. um, I know that at some point we were pursuing other opportunities to, to uh, uh, get services for the city. Um, I had the, uh, this, this, is, this is the one, uh, just to refresh everybody's recollection, where we sized the uh, please, please, a point of order. I ask that anyone who needs to have a conversation that you step into the hallway. I think we made that stipulation earlier. So officer, if you see anyone talking, you can ask them to do that out of respect for the meeting we're trying to conduct here tonight. Yes, go ahead. So, um, to refresh everybody's recollection, we sized the budget allocation for this based upon the bid and award of a contract, which was then subsequently challenged in court. Um, it's still in court, so we've decided we're just going to rebid. Um, and because it's an emergency service, and I yes. wasn't able to use the services of the contractor that we were trying to award the contract to, because that ended up in court, I had to keep pulse on for the balance of the year. Um, I didn't know it was going to be for the balance of the year, but now we're at year end. So we've prepared bid specs and we're going out this month. Thank you. Uh, and one last one, if I may, Council President, regarding uh, signatures on resolution 383-2019. I see that these signatures are from 2017 and uh, I'm yeah. wondering if the two people who it doesn't matter whether or not that it was signed in 2017. Well, I wouldn't have put it before you if it didn't matter. I'm not comfortable paying the uh, overtime, even though it would be reimbursed to us. Yes. Unless this is ratified by the council. Okay, thank you. Neither the mayor nor the administration were aware that the, that the memorandum had been executed. Oh, wow. And that's why I did the resolution. Okay, Which thank you. One was that? It's resolution 383. Uh, ratifying the execution of the memorandum of agreement between the New Jersey Office of Emergency okay. Management and the City of Orange Township. Right. Okay. Councilman Jackson, you finished? Yes, I am. Thank Any you. Any other council members uh, have council questions? Council, council President? Yes, uh, Councilman Jackson. I have two quick, two quick ones for clarification for myself. Um, when we're talking about the Ordinance 52-2019, the, uh, the bonding of, of all these uh, capital improvements. Right. Uh, when it comes to um, the various departments, especially uh, under the heading of uh, uh, a letter B and letter H, which is the fire department, uh, are we are we putting the the wherewithal to pay for this stuff prior to the this being submitted in the 2020 budget? I mean, well, we, we know we're going to have a budget presentation on, on, these, on this type of equipment or capitalization. All of this will be built into the capital budget for 2020. Um, the down payments for um, all of these items were included in this year's budget as a capital appropriation. So um, you'll see before the public hearing a projected debt service schedule. Um, and a projection for when we're going to go to permanent financing on these items. Okay, under H where it says purchase of a standard fire engine, are we talking used or brand new? Oh no, these are new. Everything's new? Everything is new. Okay, but all, it, it is four related, it's three related pieces of equipment and also the related equipment uh, stuff that goes with it. Correct, it, they're, they are, the way we spec'd them was we started with a, a vehicle that's manufactured to meet the needs, and then we spec out the additional equipment that we need here in Orange to have those uh, have that apparatus be fully functional. So those numbers uh, are taken directly from spec sheets that we worked up for mm -hmm. each of the uh, pieces of fire apparatus. Are, are, are we leaving out uh, the fire the house on Washington in this whole equation, or are we looking to remand that by 2020? Well, the firehouse on Washington Street is probably going to have to be torn down, and we'll get to that 
um, at a future date. But based upon the remediation costs, yeah. um, <coughs> it doesn't make much sense to keep the building because you need to excavate at least 20 feet under the building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't do that with the building in place. Certainly the cost that yeah. we've looked at is um, the building itself isn't worth saving based upon the cost benefit analysis. So we're gonna demo the building, we'll remediate the property, and we'll probably look at modular construction for replacement of the building. Okay, so your last one, Council President, on the ordinance that you introduced, 382019, um, is, it, is it possible that, do we, that we can reduce that to three years versus, to two years versus three? This is every three year commencing in, in, two, in 1995. The public works to send out a form to each recipient. Can we, can we, can we amend that to two years versus leaving it at three, since we're working on this? That's just my recommendation. Do it every two years instead of every three years. Is it, first of all, is doing do, doing this process? Is there any cost to the resident? No, the, there's no the cost to the handicap parking. There's no cost to the residents. No, no. the whole process of, of notifying DPW and DPW checking. No. So, no. So, mm -hmm. so, so would it be beneficial to us to stay on top of it by doing it every two years versus every three years? Well, uh, one of the just things, my suggestion. Yeah, one of the things we do now um, is we check the handicap parking stickers against the death notices that are received in the health department. Mm -hmm. um, so we do call through some of it, but I think a more active and current approach in term, more aggressive approach mm -hmm. might actually yield some spaces. So, because you have people who move, you have, right. you know, <coughs> all kinds of things that happen. Mm -hmm. So yeah. whether it's two years or three years makes it's no difference to do. us. So we can do it every two years. Yeah, I just, just wanted to make a recommendation while we're working on it, if anybody wanted to make a recommendation. Thank and you. We, that's it. We could amend me. that without we'll having that to. Tonight. Yeah, we can do that tonight. Um, anything else? Any other council members? Councilwoman Wooten? Um, 384. <clears throat> okay. Yes, your question? So I have a question regarding this resolution, but I don't know if it needs to be asked in the executive session or open session. <coughs> okay. So I was yeah. told I need to ask it in closed session. So. The question can't be discussed in public. Okay. Have a follow -up. Any other uh, council people, council members? Can I have a follow up on that? Did we just get the backup? On 384, did we get the backup? Did we what? Receive the backup for 384? You have not received anything new other than what you've already received. Okay. And council President, if I may. Okay. Yes. I, as, I, I just wanted to go back to um, 55, and, and I see the amended version still includes uh, the. the each user should have personal identification. Maybe you intended to take that out, and it was just not removed from this particular copy. Uh, letter K under 145-19. Which, which one are you talking about? Uh, this is on 55-2019, the one addressing the uh, our new our new skate park. Um, on the second page, 145-19 under rules, letter K. Uh, each user should have a personal identification that includes name, address, and telephone number. And for young people between the ages of 11 and 18, I, I don't know that they'd have ID. They uh, and they may be at the prime skating age. That was supposed to be taken out. Okay. So we can just make the amendment. Wonderful. Thank you. I thought that we eliminated letter K altogether. So we will probably vote on that separate so we can do the amended version. Well, you haven't introduced it yet, so you can just yeah. change it, and then when you introduce it, it will be without letter K. Right. And since it's the administration's ordinance, I just took out letter K. Okay. okay. Madam, further move the agenda. 
See a motion to adjourn? Move. Second. Second. Motion by Jackson, Jackson, Councilman Jackson, second by Summers Johnson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Meeting adjourned at 848. <clears throat> this is a regular meeting of the City Council of the City of Orange Township held in Council Chamber, City Hall 29 North Day Street, Orange, New Jersey on Wednesday, November 6, 2019, following the conference meeting. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Call. Councilman Coley? Present. Councilman Jackson? Here. Councilman Johnson Jr.? Here. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Here. Councilwoman uh, Williams? Present. Councilwoman Wooten? Here. Council President Eason? Here. Also present, Joyce Lanier, the city clerk, Chris Hartwick, the business administrator, Gracia R. Montillas, the city attorney, Kenneth Douglas, the fire director, Adrian Mapp, the finance director, Marty Mays, Planning and Public Works Director, Captain Dunn, the Fire Department, Marlon G. Towns, Legislative Research Officer, and Lisette Sanchez, the Record Support Technician. The requirements of NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 9 at SEC, the Sunshine Law has been met. A notice of this meeting was published in the Star Ledger on July 5th, 2019, and the record transcript on July 11th, 2019, posted on Bolton Board and City Hall and filed in the Office of the City Clerk. Approval of meeting minutes. May 24, 2018, special meeting minutes. Councilman Jackson was absent and should abstain. This was postponed from the October 15, 2019 council meeting. Is there a motion to adopt? Move. Second. Motion by Councilman Williams. Second. Second. Second by Councilman Johnson. Roll call. Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Abstain. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. <clears throat> January 27, 2016, special meeting minutes. Councilmember Jackson and Councilwoman Wooten was absent and should abstain. Is there a motion? Move. Second. Councilman Johnson and Councilwoman Williams. Roll call. Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Abstain. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Abstain. Council President Easton? Yes. October 1st, 2019, conference and regular meeting minutes. Is there a motion to adopt? Move. Councilman Coley? And Johnson. Roll call. Councilman Jackson? <clears throat> yes. I'm sorry. Councilman Coley? Thank you, Madam <laughs> Clerk. Yes. Council, Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Councilwoman Eason? Yes. Council President. Reports. Department Monthly Revenue Collection 2019. City Clerk's Office for the month of October collected $35.48. The Orange Historic Preservation Commission for the month of October collected $210. Constable reports. Richard Noisy for the month of October on 10-5, he did the monthly meeting, and 10-10, he did church security. OPA reports. For the month of October, there was 114 requests received, 56 completed, and 58 pending. Council reports. Anyone have any council reports that they would like to present at this time? Council President. Councilwoman Williams. Everything was pretty much discussed. I just want to uh, talk about two things from the Finance Committee meeting. We had it on Monday. Um, one was the, um, the uh, constables, and because we get constable reports all the time, and that we know that there's a change coming, but um, that's being vetted at the state level. County and state. At the county and state level, and then also. Um, we know the census 2020 is important. Councilman Wooten, is there anything, or you'll just <laughs> the census? I'll did you? Just, I'll just you might my be. Comments. Oh, why don't we no, have? That, that's what I was at. Go ahead. 
ahead. You want to do that during your council comments? Yes, that's we I can thought. do that during our council okay. comments. All right, thank you. All right. Anyone else have any council reports? Move the agenda. Communication and petitions, non citizen comments. Pursuant to section 4 10 of the Code of the City of Orange Township, each person addressing the council shall step up to the microphone, shall give his or her name and address in an audible tone for the record, and unless further time is granted by the presiding officer, shall limit his or her address to five minutes. The public is expected to conduct themselves in a proper manner. Any derogatory, abusive, or threatening statements will not be permitted. The chair will immediately rule such conduct out of order and terminate any further comments. I want to <clears throat> I want to just reiterate that. The second part, the public is expected to conduct themselves in a proper manner. Any derogatory, abusive, or threatening statements will not be permitted. Be permitted. So if you're going to come to the mic, please make sure it's a concern and you address the council. Um, and the first person is Mr. Jeffrey Fell. Good evening. My name is Jeffrey Feld, a local business person, um, attorney, and mortgagee whose local business address is 268 Main Street, Orange, New Jersey. Um, as my Sorry. custom. Sorry, one second. We, we skipped police and fire. Oh, we're sorry. We always forget you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have our police director followed by our Captain Dunn. <laughs> Please, Sir Victor Dusk, do you have a report? <laughs> you had to raise your hand back there. <laughs> I think they was trying to get out of it. They <laughs> 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 yeah, quiet as a yeah, church yeah. mouse. <laughs> um, Kenneth Douglas, Director of Fire Department. Um, I'm going to be very brief. Um, and just, just to go back in October was Fire Prevention Month for the City of Orange Township. <clears throat> uh, we had a very successful month. Um, we actually visited um, all the schools. Um, some of the senior buildings had to get rescheduled due to uh, scheduling conflicts. I think well over three, 4,000 children that were actually entertained along with uh, the firefighters with Sparky the dog. Got a lot of information out there. Um, and we're very pleased with that. Um, also, just to remind the residents of Orange Township that we're in a season that everybody's trying to stay warm. Um, and just please contact the fire department if you are uh, in need of smoke detectors in your home. The state of New Jersey is mandated right now that the fact that um, all battery operated smoke detectors will have to be replaced with 10 year battery operated ones. And the fire department, we are in the process of creating lists to install for those residents who are in need, um, they can contact the fire department at 973-266-4230. That's 973-266-4230. And, and finally, I just want to acknowledge this governing body um, and recognizing those individuals in the fire department that put their time, effort, blood, sweat, and tears, and love in the department to get it to where it's at today um, in recognition of Deputy Chief Elvin Padilla, Jr. <laughs> And Captain Jamie Anderson, thank you for recognizing them. Um, they both put a lot of time, a quarter of a century, into this um, department. Um, a, a lot of love and commitment, and actually, this department is moving forward um, with um, with their assistance. And um, as far as Captain Anderson, who is retired, he'll be deeply missed um, uh, as a pioneer to this department where it's at right now. And thank you very much. Director, yes. quick question. Did we ever get any carbon monoxide detectors? Um, the, well, the ones that we the, get free, um, they don't give carbon monoxide, but we are working on grants to try to get those particular smoke detectors um, um, for the residents of the township. But is there one that's a combination of fire and carbon? Yeah, they do, they do make those, um, but unfortunately, there's something that either we have to purchase or we have to get a grant to get a, a, a quite a bit of them to, <coughs> to supply the residents in town. Um, the ones that's given for free are the tenure lithium. But you are recommending that each resident should have one in their home Absolutely. along with their fire. Absolutely. Um, all residents, all residents should have a carbon monoxide detector. As we stated earlier that the call that I got from you the other day, um, the smoke detector or the detector was going off and it just happened to be a, a carbon monoxide alarm uh, knowing that it was no smoke in a, uh, the apartment, but it was. Um, the odorless gas that actually um, took lives of many people 
um, without them even knowing. So um, you have to have a smoke detector, I mean, I'm sorry, a carbon monoxide detector in your home. It's very important to save, the, save your life and your loved ones also. So it's definitely a must. Especially in light of us going into the winter months and the, amount, and the number of boilers that we never know that that is a silent killer. So we never know when it's there until it's too late. Absolutely, and so. it'd be very important to get your plumber out there to service your boiler as it relates to the smoke pipes that, that's where the gas leaks from um, when you have a gas or, or you um, burning furnace. Mm -hmm. Council President. Okay. Yes, Councilman uh, we do you the director just people have been asking about uh, Thanksgiving if they want to make donations to you yes for Thanksgiving yes so every year um, the fire department we have a community um, uh, feast for the less fortunate um, it will be on Thanksgiving Day um, November 28th 2019 which Unfortunately, it's my wife's birthday, but I'll still be there. You know? <laughs> it's a big party, huh? We will, we will be there. Well, she always comes every year, so that's what we're starting off there, and then we'll be going wherever we're going after that. Um, but, yes, we are accepting donations um, to assist um, with those who are less fortunate in the city. Um, all donations can be brought to the firehouse at 419 Central Avenue. Um, that's on the corner of Lincoln and Central Avenue. It's the firehouse. Uh, just come inside. Um, the fire department should be taking your your, your uh, non-perishables and foods. No clothing. We're not taking any clothing, but I would just say food so we can distribute them accordingly on Thanksgiving Day. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Captain right. Dunn. Good evening, Council. Captain Dunn from the Orange Police Department. Not too much to report other than we had a safe Halloween. Uh, basically no major incidents to report over that time period. Election day went very well as well. I do have some sad news. Uh, a retired member from our police department passed away uh, the other day, Angelo Bono. He served here 25 years. Uh, so did his brother Sal, Salvatore. Oh, um, Bruno? Yes. Bruno. The brothers. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Angelo Bono retired here as a police lieutenant, started here as a patrolman, uh, was a sergeant, and then promoted to lieutenant. Uh, he worked in many positions in the Orange Police Department, uh, the Juvenile Aid Bureau, uh, the Detective Bureau, uh, the Narcotics Bureau, and uh, he's going to be missed. So uh, I just came in nice together. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Can we? Harry knows Angelo and Sal. Well. He worked with them. Midnights. Yep. So two good guys, and uh, unfortunately we lost Angelo. So wow. rest in peace. And, uh, and arrangements? Well, the wake was this evening. Okay. Um, that's where I was just coming from okay. before I came here. So, mm -hmm. uh, But that's really all I have, unless anyone <coughs> has any questions. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Okay, sorry for that. Um, Mr. Jeffrey Fell. Again, my name is Jeffrey Feld, local businessman, um, attorney, and a mortgagee whose local business address is 268 Main Street, Orange, New Jersey. Um, as my custom, I delivered a heads up memo to various parties yesterday, and I incorporate most of my questions that I have in here. Um, and hopefully we'll get some answers tonight. First, uh, on behalf of my family and my business, that we, again, we want to express our condolences to Councilman uh, Johnson on his loss of his daughter. Um, I don't know where to begin. There's been no discussion of an appellate division opinion that was issued last Friday, um, where it basically said that the city uh, does not have to go to arbitration as to one of the RPM um, long-term tax exemptions that were issued under the New Jersey Housing Mortgage Finance Agency law. It's an eight-page opinion. I ask people to read it because if you read in between the lines, it shows that the city changed its policy in 2018, and in my opinion, it adopted many of the comments and questions I've been saying to attack various long-term tax exemptions, especially as given to um, RPM. We need to monitor the work product or in-house 
and special outside counsel. I am put, being put into a very difficult situation in one of my cases because there was representations made by the city as to certain facts which have been dispelled, disproven by the appellate division last week. If you look at the agenda, is he applauding? I mean, he's here. Um, Oprah, you look at the number of outstanding Oprah requests for just the month of October. It doesn't even tell you what was outstanding for the year. That's outrageous. When you're looking about why are we adopting special meeting minutes for a meeting that occurred in 2016, that's wild. That's almost four years ago. What is going on? Um, the last resolution on this list is the Nung Prong Tong Criminal Defense Council for the Mayor's Chief of Staff. I believe this might be the fourth time that that has been listed on the um, you know, agenda, either voted up or voted down. Do not go to close in second session. At some point, you're going to have to vote on it and explain why you voted for it or against it. The public needs to know. And especially when you look at what's attached, there was a letter sent by the Whipple firm in July. And that's almost six months ago. I mean, what's going on? Especially two weeks ago, there was an article in the New Jersey Law Journal and talked about Whipple, and he's like the dean of the criminal defense bar. <coughs> um, the capital bond ordinances, please attach the applications to the local finance board. I received them from the local finance board. They were filed on October 25th. The deadline was October 23rd, but there's very information. When you're posting, I would ask that the, 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 um, the slide deck that we had earlier today be posted on the city's website. It was a great slide deck. I also ask that the calendar year 2019 best practice inventory that I received a copy today be also be posted on the city's public website as soon as possible. Um, again, the local finance board, because it's very important that we understand the amount of debt that we're, incur we're incurring. And when we heard about self-liquidating debt for like your utility, let's not forget that in 2016, we had to amend our debt statement because the water utility was not self-liquidating. And if you look at the 2017 audit, it shows in the inside that the utility was a negative number for a couple hundred dollars. Um, when we're talking about adopting minutes, there was a special meeting held in January 2018 regarding utilities. Again, those minutes should be adopted because they're not even on the public website. But the most important thing is that in the future, when you do have local finance board applications, I mean, I raise this, uh, always attach the application to it. That would, um, would answer uh, Councilman Jackson's questions if he had it because each application addresses what bonds and what bond ordinances because they're attached to it. But the real issue that we really have to look at tonight and it really has to be done in public, is this Nung Prung Tung criminal defense attorney retention re resolution for the uh, mayor's chief of staff. Also, I can't <coughs> emphasize, read the opinion that came out by the appellate division on Friday and start reading. Mr. Phil, your time is up. Thank you. You're welcome. Linvald James. Good night again. I'm Linval James, 738 Irving Terrace, Orange, New Jersey. I'm just concerned about the present event that I saw in this election, Board of Education. I was a little bit disturbed, that's why I'm here with the Board of Education election, especially in the South Ward. The question I want to know, 
when persons is up for election, I believe you campaign before and things like that. At the South Ward, especially Haywood, it was kind of chaos. Candidates and persons was there pushing in people's face. It was nice. My thing is that we have the security to take care of those problems because I really didn't see any security. And it was kind of chaos. People running up and down in people's face, you know, issuing the paper and things like that. You know, it wasn't too nice. So I'm concerned that if we're doing this at this level, mm -hmm. what we're going to do 2020? So we need to get this thing under control. The chief of police, he said that early on that everything runs smooth. It's very, very smooth. But uh, some package was bad. So we want to make sure that we don't have these problems at the polling here. Because it does not look pretty. And you know, Orange already have a bad name. We don't want to maintain that. We want to go forward and make Orange a really success. So please, council, we're asking you to look into that and see what is up to that, right? Yes, Mr. James. Usually those type of issues are handled by the election board, which is Chris Durkin's office in Newark and our clerk's office here. So if there's any issues at the poll, we all, she always give you a number call and we send out a monitor. And usually the county sheriff's department handles those type of issues. And a sheriff's officer will come up and take care of any concerns that you have. The Orange police do really not, really do not get involved in local elections because of the issues it could be biased. So usually it's handled by the Essex County Sheriff's Department. So in the future, we will make sure that numbers are available so that if you see a problem, you can call and grant. And I tell you, the Sheriff's Department will come up and take care of whatever through our clerk's office. Yeah, thank okay. you very much. I'm ignorant towards it, but I okay. see it. So as, right. as a community person, yeah. I want to make sure I say yeah, something. Right. Thank you very much. All right, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. Sean Hunter. Sean Hunter, 748 Berkeley Avenue. Good evening, everyone. How Good are evening. you? How are you? Um, my concern and everything is about the children. Uh, I'm glad we had a good election, and hopefully we get the parents in that's here that have children that wants to do something to make our education be better. Because um, my concern is that my grandson will be going into the public school next year, and I just want to make sure the education is there and that we know that our children are our future and that we need to make sure that we have the right equipment and everything to have the children get the correct education. Um, especially now, we hopefully that the Y would be open up something for activity for the children to do within the city. And um, that's basically all I have to say, you know, concern about the, the children, our future. Okay? Ms. Hunter? Yes. In the future, we have a new superintendent who's very aggressive in the city of Orange. Yes, ma'am. And anytime you have problems or concerns about the children, his office is always open. He'll meet with anybody. Okay. Because you, really the council really doesn't get involved in those type of things unless there's a concern that a child is, there's a safety issue. But all of those concerns should be dealt with through the Board of Education. Okay. And our new superintendent is a very approachable gentleman. Oh, thank you. And he'll you. take all of your suggestions and he will, I promise you, he will work it through for you. Oh, wow. Thank all you right. so much. You're welcome. And yes. And once again, my name is Sean Hunter. Thank okay. you. Um, Mary Mead. My name is Mary Mead. Hello. My name is Mary Mead. I'm at 668 
Lincoln Avenue. And um, it was already brought up, but I also want to let you know that I also had a confrontational experience at the election polls. And so I think it's wonderful that he brought that up. And can we perhaps, because I would have called the Orange Police, to be perfectly honest. I was a little, it was a little chilly, so I wasn't going to hang around. But I will speak to the county clerk's office. But I think it's important that everyone be aware that that, that is the remedy, to call the sheriff. So if maybe we can publicize that in advance, that would be wonderful. Um, as a person on disability, on a, ver on a very limited fixed income, I'm very concerned about these bond issues. Debt must be repaid. The repayment of debt in the municipality comes from <coughs> taxes and fees. It seems to me, I don't know, $30 million seems to be a really large sum of money. And my taxes did go up. I'm not sure how much farther they could go up until they're unaffordable. And I think that I'm not the only one. And I'm wondering, I'm a little bit concerned about this because we have problems in Orange with another utility of sort, which is parking. Nothing gets done about parking. Nothing changes. The parking is in certain neighborhoods, in my particular neighborhood, is, is very, very difficult for working people. And we're, this development happens around us, and it doesn't seem like anyone in the municipality is paying any attention. So I'm wondering if we're not planning for growth as far as um, the number of cars that will be added to our municipality, are we planning for their water use? You know, I was over on Mitchell Street today where we gave someone a huge pilot to build a huge building. And then we replaced the sidewalk. Does their pilot even cover the replacements of the sidewalks on the opposite side of the street under a train trestle? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't seem to me as a taxpayer that there's enough thought and analysis being put into, and it seems like we go forward carrying a bigger and bigger burden. Thank you. Karen Wells. Karen Wells, Highland Avenue. Uh, my concern is the bonding also. We are, uh, what, what my question is, and I do not want Mr. Hartwick to answer this question. I would like one of the city council members to answer this question. It's just either, it can be yes or no, or explain to me. Do you understand that bonding is taking on debt? Council member? Uh, Ms. Wells, I don't know if you had, um, but during our, council meetings under Councilman Coley's tenure. We were stated we do not answer any questions during council meetings. So if you have a question, I think we all are aware of where we're going and what we're doing. But if you have any specific questions, we can always talk offline. Okay, let me say this. Okay, if that is, that's the rule, I think that's really an affront to citizens since we're paying taxes. We should be able to ask any question and get an answer. But if that's the case, fine, we'll deal with that later. But it's clear, it is clear as a financial person that the understanding of bonding by the city council is, is just, you know, oh, we've got a bond, vote yay or nay. You obviously don't understand the finance, that we are taking on all of this bonding with an increase in taxes and all kinds of things, no increase in services. And, yeah, let's take on another bond. Let's buy Orange Hospital. I think you, somebody really needs to think about that because this is just going in a hole. I mean, I'm a person, you know, I don't want to afford it, but I do. But uh, it, can't, it cannot continue, and something needs to be done. 
either pe more people, more qualified people, need to sit on the council that do understand bonding and finance. Uh, Mrs. Or, Wells, once I read the statement about, about no derogatory statements. That's been, not derogatory. I, yes, it is. Yes, it is. I, 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 I meant that. Why is that do derogatory? Do not attack the council people. When you say more qualified, we all feel we are qualified. So we are not going to have that discussion here. That's an opinion. So if you have, but, well, then that's an opinion that you will not voice in this chambers. So, if you have a question or a concern, please move forward with that. Okay, 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 then uh, fine, because I, it's already out there in the air. Then the thing is, if we look at the results of the way things are done around here, when we don't get a budget till October that comes out in January, that we're taking on all of this debt, that we incur these increase in taxes, that's just insane, I think it speaks for itself. You don't have to call anybody anything, it speaks for itself. But I think there really needs to be a class or something so that people understand finance because it's not happening. Thank you very much. Derek Henry. <clears throat> Derek Henry. Uh, 253 Ogden Street, Orange, New Jersey, uh, a private citizen and a member of the Orange Board of Education. However, please be advised uh, that my following comments or commentary do not reflect the members of my board or the board uh, individually or in their entirety. Working backwards first, uh, regarding uh, resolution 384, 2019, could somebody please kill the zombie resolution? This resolution has been three times up, three times down, and here it is back again, covertly in a consent agenda fashion. I, I'm trying to figure out what makes this resolution so special uh, that it has been introduced again. You know, the Reverend Bernice Henry you know, taught all her boys never to count nobody's money, but I'm going to break her rule just in this one instance. Um, in regards to at least what I remember from my time on the CBAC, not to mention her seat as a county freeholder, uh, Ms. Cooper makes roughly 10 times the amount in regards to this uh, retainer fee. If the county's not rushing to cover her, why are we? This should be put to bed finally, and we should kill this Lazarus resolution. I'm getting tired of seeing it. Next. No. As we are all elected officials sitting here regarding uh, certain commonalities and governance, I'm looking at this, you know, final dot, 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 adoption of minutes three years later. Now, despite the newness of the majority of the Board of Education, we will be held to task in regards to the adoption of minutes at least three years old. Why is it allowable here when it's not allowable at 451 Lincoln? And in regards to the $9 million bond, um, are we incurring further cost in regards to just the bond to purchase the foreclosure note itself as uh, two of those buildings are HPC? Um, what other costs are we going to be incurring in the future uh, that may not be mentioned at this current date? Uh, and in closing, I would ask my councilman to responsibly, um, you know, spot for a motion to separate 384 um, from the consent agenda um, and put this matter to bed because it would be an abhorrence, it would be a detriment to you know, the taxpayers and stakeholders in Orange that we are the only people pursuing the payment of this resolution. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gus. 
I'm sorry. Gus Mitchell. Gus Mitchell. I'm sorry, Mr. Mitchell. I was trying to read your last name. Gus Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Doesn't change. <laughs> <laughs> Gus Mitchell, 240 North Center Street, Orange, New Jersey. I'm about the bond issue too. I think before the council votes on it, it should go towards a vote in an election year. Nobody should be able to take on such a debt without the people of Orange as knowledge of how it will be paid for, when it will be paid for, and so forth. It should go to an election. The council shouldn't put this on their head just to pass it. I know the issues are important, what you're bringing up, but it should go to the people for a vote. My second issue is, I want to know what the ordinance says about sidewalks, repair, and who's responsible for those. Uh, Mr. Mitchell, if you will get in touch with um, our business administrator tomorrow, he will provide that to you. Get in touch with who, ma'am? Get in yeah. with our business administrator, Mr. Hartwick, tomorrow. Oh. He will provide that to you. And any time that you need information of that nature, mm -hmm. you do not have to wait to account to me. You can always go to the clerk's office. She, they keep a file of every ordinance and resolution that's passed. And you can request it and they will give it to you. And Mr. Hartwick will provide that with, to you tomorrow. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'd ask another question there. If my, side, if my sidewalk is broken, who's responsible to fix it? As I said, he will provide it to you tomorrow. No, ma'am, I'm just asking a question now. I'm, and I'm it's answering. He will provide you the ordinance tomorrow. It will We're give not going to answer. answer questions off the top of our heads. We're going to give it to you in black and white, which is written in an ordinance. Okay. All right? Thank you very much. <clears throat> what about my first question? Which was... Oh, so nobody was listening? Yes. <laughs> the first question is that the city, the council should not vote on the, on the, on the bond until it's taken. Until that was, you, state, you made a statement that, that you didn't ask us the question. You said we should not. You didn't ask us where we going to. So we didn't, that didn't require an answer. I see. All right. You have been technical, man. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is the city going to vote on this? As I said, we will not respond to questions. So you can hang around and you can see what happens. Okay? Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Is there a motion to close citizen comments? Move. Second. Councilman Williams and Councilman Coley. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Council comments? Council President? Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Uh, we had a South Ward meeting uh, at 400 Jefferson. Um, it was the best I've had in about five years. Um, don't know what made everyone come out to this one, but I'm very happy that they did. Um, I'm sorry? You're building. Oh, yeah, it's building, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we had over 60 residents. We ran out of chairs. I think we were at fire code. Uh, yep. But what I loved most was that residents asked questions, directors were there, uh, there were new residents to the city of Orange and they got to meet the directors. Um, my meetings are fact check, you know, rumor check meetings. I run into residents all the time and, you know, they're in these, on these different um, social media pages and, you know, different emails and, you know, just a lot of things. And some of the rumors, are, you know, they believe them. And I said to them, you know, you should come to the meetings. Um, my sophomore meetings and 
BA Chris does a really good job of explaining in detail as best he can. Um, we were supposed to have one in November. I decided to cancel it um, because I need more time to get the answers to the amount of questions that I received. So the next meeting will be December 5th, same location, 400 Jefferson, from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Um, we serve dinner. <laughs> I thought that was a good touch uh, because people are coming from work. Uh, Public Works gave out leaf bags and uh, recycled buckets, which residents really did like. I thank the city for having the trunk or treat at Lincoln Avenue School. Um, it was a really fun and safe environment for our children. It rained that day, even though after my kids still wanted to go trick-or-treating, so we still went trick-or-treating in the rain, but it's just important to make sure that we accommodate uh, our children. Um, I talked to um, Director Warren today, but I wanted on the record uh, Haywood Avenue, you know, after school dismissal is like horrific. Um, I'm so scared that something is going to happen to one of the kids um, trying to cross the street. You have buses, you have um, parents coming up the hill, parents going down the hill. You have the principal standing in the middle of the street with a stop sign trying to cross the children. Um, you have the crossing guard at the top. It's like we've already had. Um, two instances where children were hit on Lincoln and Haywood and Berkeley and Haywood. And I just don't, I want us to be ahead of this. Um, so it's just, it's really bad um, at dismissal, um, especially on days that they don't have aftercare. So I did speak with the director today, but I just want it on the record. Um, yesterday, um, I voted at Haywood and, um, you know, I didn't have any issues, but I do understand um, that a, a, a lay resident would not know. I would definitely think that they would call Orange Police also. Um, but I was number 273. Um, my college son, it was his first time voting. Uh, it was a, a hilarious experience because I told him it was a touch screen and he's like touching it and it's not, you know, it's not doing it, but you know, we helped him. And I said, you know, once you vote the first time, um, you'll understand, you know, I talked with him the whole way there, you know, people died and all of that. Um, so there were a lot of residents. Um, I get confused with the rules because I know uh, when I ran, the last time I ran, you couldn't be anywhere near the front of the school, which I thought was wrong um, because residents were pulling up in the middle to vote and no one could get near them. So they have to figure out an equal medium. Um, and the people that are running and the people that are working do need to be cautious of you know, how they confront people because I voted in the dark yesterday um, and that light still isn't fixed in front of Haywood. <laughs> but, um, okay, that's that. And congratulations to the three new board members to the Board of Education. I have two children in the city of Orange Public Schools, so welcome. Um, and congratulations to Assemblyman, Assemblyman Giblin, Assemblywoman Timberlake, and my friend, my buddy, Juan Riviera for Registrar. Um, I, I love voting. My whole family votes, and I think that we need to do it more of a family thing. We need to make a big deal of it. We, I know they're doing a civic day in Orange High, but we really need to get these young people. They have to understand the importance because 2020 is coming very quickly. Thank you. Right. Councilman Johnson. Hey, Council President, thanks for recognizing me. I, I just want to briefly, and I hope I don't forget it, uh, anybody, um, on the loss of my daughter, first of all, Council President and, and Council colleagues, thanks for introducing this this resolution this evening, and thank you so much for your caring and outreach to the last couple of weeks. Um, it's truly a, a blessing to be part of uh, this council group. Um, uh, we, we're not just adversaries at all, all the time, but we are friends. That's, that's uh, really important to me. I want to thank uh, Mayor Warren, all the directors, police, fire, everybody from the city, all my neighbors, immediate neighbors in the West Ward, and all my orange neighbors throughout the city that I didn't even know uh, knew me. But uh, you'd be surprised uh, who watches you and, uh, and who uh, reaches out to you in your time of need. Congressman Payne, Assemblywoman Brittany Timberlake, Assemblyman Giblin, uh, Essex County Chairperson Leroy Jones, I mean, the, the outreach from uh, from my uh, senior political colleagues was was phenomenal. But this one let everybody you know just continue to keep uh, the Johnson family, Johnson Denny family, in your prayers. 
as we go through these, uh, this stretch of the loss of our youngest daughter. Uh, it's, it's tough, but it's, it's, it's great to be uh, back in the seat again to get my mind back on the, on the business of the city. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Councilman Johnson. Councilman Williams. Thank you, Council President. Um, I have a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> but what I don't want to forget, uh, Councilwoman Summers Johnson, what they need is Mr. Bryant because we yes. left Orange High School yes. as a registered voter yes. and knew how we were going to give back to our community when we got of age. Um, Council President, through you to Mr. Hartwick, um, I spoke to you, but I also want to put a couple okay. things on the record. The fire on Hickory Street, um, this structure has uh, been on fire before. We've talked about it. Um, what is our course of action? Uh, I met with the public works director today and um, we're going to initiate a demolition plan. Okay, so we will see this demolished shortly, right? Yes. Okay. And um, I know we've had a series, of, a, a series of text messages and conversation, but the street repaving, as we're repaving, there has been some hiccups and maybe because you're halfway <coughs> through and I don't know, but the sidewalks and, you, and the pictures that we send out and everything, is that just a normal part of the process or we, do we have to um, do something as we go in through the, you know, because it's just. Yeah, I mean, it's like any other contract. Mm -hmm. You have to administer the contract and right. we have people in the field checking on the work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes citizens uh, get to us before um, we get to it ourselves. Mm -hmm. But there have been many instances where we've gone on our own accord and told the contractor they need to redo this or that. Mm -hmm. And we'll continue to do that as part of the contract administration. And we'll fix whatever the issues are. We addressed the driveway apron today. Mm -hmm. um, there was an issue with regard to monuments that were being covered. Um, we've addressed that. Mm -hmm. um, we also addressed- um, Stop signs being removed and no stop temporary. Stop signs and also, um, you know, some people were very concerned that we were cementing over water valves, but in re reality, you cement over them and then you take a cutting tool to the cement and mm -hmm. you um, uh, recreate the access. So, um, but, you know, we should nevertheless um, address those issues. Okay. Um, also, um um, so with the sidewalks and everything, and we know we have a pressing matter coming up, and I don't know if Director Mays has been able to um, become aware of it. Um, the the matter um, with the post office. And the postmaster texted me, and I didn't get a chance, so she couldn't get here. But. Yeah, we're aware of it. Marty's mm -hmm. actually going to see her in the morning. Okay. But the, the fear um, that you expressed to me will not be realized. There's two entrances and exits, and okay. we'll make accommodation for the vehicles to be able to get in and out. Okay. And then there's the issue, the continued issue that we keep getting. Um, I know we have development going on, um, rodents, specifically rats. And, and I guess I want to ask the question is, because it's not necessarily us baiting, but do we have a standard of baiting? And can it get to the point of what is being baited, what's being baited is not useful anymore, you know? Yeah, I don't know the, the answer to that question. I'd mm -hmm. have to speak to uh, Vinny and Paul. Okay. Um, but I can get back to you with a written, you know, report as to what the abatement, what the baiting requirements are. Mm -hmm. um, and we can also, you know, check and look to see if um, there's more we could do. Now, I know, um, and I guess, um, Mr. Towns, you listen. At, I know at one point, let's say a person acquired a property, they had to abate it, and then when they go to develop, perhaps um, one of the things we had talked about is increasing the baiting because, for instance, if a lot sits there for a period of time, mm -hmm. that maybe we can say they have to bait every six months to completion or something like that? I have to check because these are state requirements. Okay. Uh, they're not local code requirements. Okay. So, uh, that doesn't mean we couldn't do more than what the state statute requires. Okay. Uh, I'll have to check. Okay. But I hear it. I mean, uh, a lot of it is um, 
lot of it is garbage related mm -hmm. um, and I think some of the changes that we've made to the garbage ordinance mm -hmm. specifically mm -hmm. will help in this area okay and also abandoned properties too because yeah. when you have an abandoned property and then they kind of dwell and then you knock that down that's right. what they call um, also um, while um, voting is kind of handled with the city clerk um, and also the county clerk there was some issues that should be noted because um, the city clerk has direct impact on them and one was in the North Ward Councilwoman I don't know if you knew that the Elks Club did not have any heat yesterday we worked, we worked on it all day yesterday. Okay. okay. We so worked he, on uh, it yesterday and come to find out they, in the morning when I got the call, they sent out repairmen, mm -hmm. but it has to do with the heating unit on the roof. When I got there yesterday afternoon, mm -hmm. they were there repairing it. They just couldn't get it up before okay. it was over, but okay. uh, Mayor Warren took over two heaters, so when I got there, it was pretty warm inside. Okay, so heating, and just to make sure, you know, going forward, that's still a viable place. Um, well, uh, we're not so sure. That, and while you're on that topic, you're going to need to replace the Elks say. Club. Yes, as, yeah. yes, yes as I was just going to say, we're not so sure we're going to be there the next election right. based on some information right. that mm -hmm. uh, we, that's some things that's going on. So okay. that will be, a, we will find a new location. Okay, and then... Um, Just, um, and I hate the, I hate those books that say this for dummies, that for dummies. I hate those books, but it's, it's, uh, but it's a, but this, the, the, the whole, um, thing of the book is just to give a simplified way to do things. And, and I, I really want to give a simple, um, why you're proposing this capital. I mean, you need to, we need the capital. Um, we knew that this was coming because this was a, a in the budget, we knew that this was coming later, but why now and why is it a great time to, um, to do this? Well, for one, um, as I tried to make the point subtly simplified. in the presentation, very, that's why I said simplified. Um, there, these are many of these improvements are being required by the regulatory agency that mm -hmm. oversees uh, water, sewer, and storm water, mm -hmm. uh, which is the Department of Environmental Protection. Mm -hmm. um, I was very clear in the presentation about being served with the notice of violation last year. Mm -hmm. That was a notice of violation that was building for r r basically years. Um, so the vast majority of the water capital improvements are the result of decades of deferred maintenance. Um, and the DEP basically served us with a notice of violation and wanted a plan as to how we were gonna clean it up. Why now? Mm -hmm. um, well, we can stage the, um, the actual borrowing over time. Mm -hmm. However, we are in a very, very favorable interest rate market. So if you were actually going to bond now you'd be in the most favorable interest rate market that we've seen in over a decade. <clears throat> and the stretch and the payback and how was it stretched? So the, out? the the amortization of the debt is based upon a calculation of useful life. Mm -hmm. um, for the water sewer utility and stormwater improvements, we've estimated that that useful life is anywhere from 15 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. So we would try to spread out the repayment as uh, over as great a period of time as we could to minimize the impact on rates. Um, on the capital improvement side, um, the vast majority of those items um, in the capital improvement ordinance, which is the $9 million ordinance that you'll uh, introduce tonight, those are things that absolutely have to be done. We have, um, we have a need um, for uh, new firefighting equipment and trucks. Um, there's little that I can say other than that there have been times during the last six months to a year where um, I've been relying or the city has been relying on backup apparatus um, 
to go out and respond to fires. Um, and we didn't have in those in that time period um, another backup to the apparatus we were using. So when I have to take fire engines out of service because they're aged equipment beyond their useful life, um, I have to have a plan to replace that equipment. And we've been talking about the, the need for fire trucks now for a year and a half. Um, and uh, we're at the point where we can't, uh, we can't delay uh, any further. And as far as the two other major components of the capital improvement ordinance, um, I indicated one of them is the $2.5 million for the public safety camera system. Um, administration views that as a critical public safety improvement that will yield substantial results in the reduction of crime and the deployment of resources. In addition, we are applying to FEMA and to the Department of Homeland Security for grants to cover that two and a half million, but we don't have an answer and won't until some future date when they make the decision as to how to allocate the FEMA Homeland Security grants. Um, we qualify, um, we are in uh, the tier one uh, risk category because of our proximity to Port Newark and Newark Airport. Um, and so, you know, we have a fairly decent shot in terms of our grant application. Um, the other major item, as I indicated before, is improvements to the public works yard. Um, these are not improvements that can wait. Um, anybody who was on the CBAC committee got a tour of some of the facilities there um, and saw firsthand uh, the need to do some, some improvements. So, um, you know, those improvements have a smaller or a, uh, a shorter useful life, I should say. And we estimate those improvements at between 10 and 12 years, and we would look to amortize the debt over that period of time as is required by the bond law. And then two more. Um, the hospital. Council President, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Councilwoman Williams. We, we're going to stop that conversation now. I'm finished and with that. I have another question. I'm sorry. We are going to stop the conversation right now because it has been going on long enough. And I, I meant to limit each council person to five minutes, and I didn't do that because all of the questions that are being asked was, was talked about during the presentation when we did our conference meeting. So right now, I'm going to ask one of the councilmen if we can take a five-minute recess. And then we come back to our comments? Yeah, then we'll okay. come back and finish and council, the comments. Council President, yes. if, I, if I may, I just had uh, remembered that I, I omitted the clerk's office, who the, the ladies in the clerk's office and Brother Quinn uh, have been by uh, my family's side from day one. I pre really pre I don't know how I forgot them, but it's I do want to honor and thank the clerk's office. We wish you're here and not your heart. Thank you. Yeah, so five minutes, Council President, for yes. recess. Do Move. we have a motion? Aye. Second. All right. We're going to take a five-minute recess. Um, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Bring back Dunkin' Donuts. That was Orange Middle School, right? Uh, yeah, three or four in the same building. Yeah. But that's, that's a, yeah, Orange School. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah, in front of the camera. Walk downstairs. I need to sit. Hey, bro. Is she leave? Is she out? My hands kind of dirty. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Just emotional. Hi, how are you? How are you? All right. All right. Too much. Y'all messing up on me. I'm like, I'm on my spirit. I said, I don't know why they sent me. I'm the biggest person. Nobody told me nothing. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. I call them everything. Nobody. When I tell you, they don't tell me. They don't call me. Like, don't tell me. They don't tell me nothing. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Like, he's going to be the best. How are you? I give you a hug. Let me see. I got some in here. Yes, I saw your name in the book. Yeah. Yes, you came by early. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, Is it? Is that a Monday? Okay. I'll come. I'll shoot you guys when I get off, man. I'm going to work on Wednesday. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Five minutes is up. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, yeah, pull over. Amen. Yes. You know, but it's actually he likes me. Can I get a motion to reconvene? Move. Second. Motion by Councilman Johnson Jr. Second by Councilman Jackson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We're now back in session. 953. Well, we can have Councilman Johnson uh, Jackson go ahead and if Donna wants to add additional comments, she can later. All right. I, I, I just wanted to thank you, Council President. Just uh, reassure the, the public. I, I had a conversation with one of our citizens on the way out, and uh, I was trying to explain to them sometimes we have to make decisions, uh, the tough decisions, and the public doesn't know everything because they don't attend the meetings, they don't re read all the documents we read, they don't get the training, they don't get an opportunity to ask some of the questions that we ask, and sometimes they, don't, they miss the presentations that are actually conducted in this chamber. So uh, understand that uh, uh, while I don't speak for every member, I, I would uh, uh, take the chance that nobody here is <coughs> voting for high taxes on purpose. They're not saying, let's just raise the taxes. Nobody's saying, let's just increase the debt. I don't think that's how we roll. We're trying to do things that are in the best interest of the town. Um, and sometimes we have to make difficult decisions uh, that seem as though we disregard the obligations that we're placing on our taxpayers. Um, as we move forward with this new master plan, we have uh, a council who's moving forward uh, in a way that, um, I guess, remediates some of the issues that have lingered for years, for decades even. And um, as, as uh, uh, mechanical things go, they don't get better as time goes by, they get worse. And somebody has to make the tough decisions sometimes, and that's what we're elected to do. Although uh, citizens may not have the opportunity to flip a switch or push a button in voting for it. Um, it, it we are elected as their representatives and, and just have confidence that we are trying to do the right thing. Um, thank you, Council President. That's all I have to say. Councilman Coley. Yes. Um, Councilwoman Williams touched on, but Mr. Mays, can you, you come to the podium just for a second here? Regarding 186 Hickory Street, um, the fire. Um, that property has been, I think it was, what, two or three times caught on fire? Twice that I know of. Twice. Father's Day. And, and I've been uh, yelling and screaming uh, to you to have that property torn down, what, two or three, four years now? Yep. And yet, I think you was trying to give someone an opportunity to uh, rebuild the property, but they never did. What had and happened was it was a prior owner who sold to a new owner, and he closed on May of this year. So the new owner followed through with what he said he was going to do in terms of picking it up. He had come in, uh, filed permits, and now it's on fire. Now, now it's on fire. And the BA just said it, it's going to be demo um, as quickly as possible. Absolutely. Okay. And There'll quickly, be a resolution on the next meeting for emergency demo. And once that resolution is passed, um, the demolition will start immediately, immediately the, uh, thereafter? Well, it'll start as soon as we get the contractor out there after the resolution. We'd have to do a requisition and a purchase order first uh, through the emergency process. So it will be down before Christmas. It'll be down way before Christmas. I'm doing everything I can to move it forward. So we're going to have, have a nice bow on it. Okay. Yeah, wonderful. And just to let you know, we've been, me and you have had back and forth. Yes, we have. And believe it or not, thank God we had that because yesterday the, I called the owner last night about 730. And he didn't even know it was caught on fire. And he was in here first thing this morning. So it was good that it wasn't a situation where I didn't have a contact. So it will be down. I'm working on it. It's on the top of my list. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And regarding the, the, um, the bond ordinances uh, for our uh, water um, infrastructure um, repairs, uh, I'm glad that the BA and administration um, uh, is taking um, uh, the lead on uh, upgrading our water infrastructure system. 
Uh, we don't want to be another Newark having um, a bad press, having um, all kinds of uh, water issues. Uh, a few weeks ago, um, I stopped at one of the um, uh, sites where uh, the Shagger Group was um, uh, repairing the uh, water mains. Those water mains are 130 years old. It's about time that we upgrade our water infrastructure in this town. Those are the new ones. <laughs> you know, and the previous administrations, they knew all about the aging water infrastructure problems and issues, but they just kicked the can down the road because they didn't want to um, uh, put their arms around this task, this arduous task that we have to, um, you know, address. And I'm glad that it's being addressed, you know, right now, you know, so we could take the credit for, you know, um, putting our arms around a situation that has been a, a problem for, for, for many, many years. And a lot of towns refuse to get involved in the water infrastructure repairs because they just don't want to go through the hard work, you know, to uh, get it done. And I thank our BA for leading that charge. <coughs> and uh, that's all I have, Council President. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Councilman Williams, do you have anything that you want to say? Yeah, I just want to. Um, I have lost. I'm sorry. I, let me ask Councilman Williams, and then we'll come back. Okay. Did you have anything you want to say? Okay. Councilman Williams, do you want to say something? Or you do. Let me talk about it. She will. Uh, she will. I'll just. Let me say. Okay. So I'm just um, really quick. Um, the census planning is going on, um, and be announcing a meeting coming up um the committees are become are are in place and um announcing the next meeting will come uh, shortly so the meeting there is going to be a community meeting for nonprofits, and that i'm going to say at the end of the meeting because i have to pull the um the flyer up and that's going to be her, held at first shiloh baptist but i'll pull that flyer up um but for contacts with the census if they have anything they can contact Councilwoman Wooten if you have any questions around the census <coughs> and planning. <clears throat> and the only other thing I had to say, Council President, is that um, every, it seemed like everybody in Orange got a cold. I was just like, oh my God. Exactly. I was like, this weather changing. I'm going to stay away from y'all. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> not sick. Every, I think Joy started it. Uh, <laughs> um, to the family of Gary Simpkins, um, uh, Mrs. Simpkins passed on and his. Uh, funeral and wake will be on Monday and Tuesday, um, but I just wanted to send out condolences to the um, Simpkins family, um, and he's out of the valley, so just um, sending love and prayers up for them. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have a couple of announcements. On Sunday, November the 10th, we will have a Veterans Day Parade. We will march from Epiphany Church by 130 Main, the Cotton Funeral Home, all the way to the Elks Club, where we would have a program honoring our veterans and our women's veterans are being honored. And congratulations to Councilwoman Williams for being honored last Saturday um, in Newark for her contribution as the Air Force, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. As a veteran and given her time and energy to protect America. Um, one of the things we're going to do different this year for the Veterans Day Parade, we are going to raise the American flag. We are proud Americans, and we are going to do that on Sunday and let everybody know how proud we are to be Americans. So we have a little program asking all of you to come out and support. We'll start March at 11, and the program at the Elks will probably start about 12, 1 o'clock, depending on how fast we get up Main Street. We have a lot of we have some bands coming and a lot of visitors that's going to march in the parade. On another thought, uh, and Council President, this is it, so we're marching at 11, not we're, we're marching, marching at, at 11. 11. So you okay. need to be there before 11 to get in line. <laughs> So we're going to start marching at 11. At from Military Park. At the Military Park. Up to the Oaks. Okay, right. Um, also, we are in need of crossing guards. 
So if you know anyone that wants to be a crossing guard, that wants to need a part-time job, please have them go to the police department to get the application? No, have them come here to City Hall. To the, the business administrator's office until the HR person's back. So if you have any friends or relatives that want to do that, have them come in. We need to protect our children, so we need crossing guards. Uh, a lot of the residents have been seeing the police officers out there, they've been complaining that we're paying them to stand to be a crossing guard, but that's because of the lack of crossing guards and the lack of personnel to do those jobs. So please. But on another note, I just want to make a couple of comments and observations. You know, I've been in Orange a long time and I've enjoyed this city. I enjoy where I live, I enjoy where I, the ward that I live in, because it seems like home to me, because I know a lot of the residents, the store owners, and we talk and we meet and we know each other by name. But it seems that we get a lot of bad press, but the city of Orange is doing great. Granted, we're doing the bonds to try and improve the water structure. We're doing some other things. To tr Everybody talks about the hospital center, but we have to do something. We cannot sit idly by and let our city continue to deteriorate. Uh, and I'm just a little frustrated, I guess, and trying to figure out, as we get new, new residents coming into Orange, they always hook up with negative people. Mm -hmm. Try and get to know us before you start talking about what we're not doing and what we're doing. And if you have concerns or questions, we're always available. You can pick, you know, I'm always about them on Main Street. You can see me anywhere. And just talk about what the council is come, trying to do. Don't always come to the council meeting because you met somebody that is never, never going to be happy the way Orange is run. But meet some positive people and try to get together and unify and work together. If you think there's a problem, come to us with a suggestion. Come to us with some ideas and let's work through them. Versus always coming up here and saying what the city's not, what we're not doing and who's not qualified. I mean, I think all of us up here is just as qualified as anybody in Orange. I know I am. I have a college education. I still work in the school district. And I've been working all my life and I'm still working. So what all I'm saying is, let's get some positive energy going. And I know we usually don't call names, but to Mr. Fell. Hold on, hold on, let me finish, let me finish. We have attorneys in this city, and it always seems like somebody is always trying to send somebody to jail. No, 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 there, are, there is no conflict, yes, I do have a son that's a police officer, and I checked with my attorney, and I could vote on the contract because it affects more than him. And I need you to keep my family out of the paper, unless you're gonna get the facts and tell the facts. So let's move on. And officer, if he says another word, have him removed from this, this, this chambers right now. I'm done with that. It's been years, my son has been an officer for 20 years and we need to stop the attacks. We need to stop you going into saying things that is not true. Get your facts together and let's move on. Let's move the city forward in a positive manner and let's help the people that's out here working, trying to make it. I spent a lot of time in this city doing things and working with people and up at night and making sure my residents are safe. So let's all work together here. Let's work together here and get this city back to where as that, what was that, Lexington Hughes wrote that poem, let America be America again. Let orange be orange again. And we're gonna get rid of the negativity and we all are gonna to talk to our residents about staying positive and supporting us to move this city forward. And I wanna thank Mr. Hartwick, our business administrator, for all the hard work he has done since he's been here. I had to remind him earlier about something that happened before he got here that we were discussing. And I said, you weren't even here yet. But, but um, he does a good job, he works hard, and most, and he makes sure his stuff is factual. So anybody that wants, you can talk to him, go to his office, he's always open. So if you have a concern, he will sit down and help you work through those concerns. And with that, we're going to move on.
Council Thank you. President? Yes, Councilman Coley. Just one last thing. Um, a meeting it's a two ago, I brought up the idea of us uh, bringing some flags across the Twitty overpasses. I think, uh, and I f personally feel that having those flags uh, raised uh, prior to uh, uh, veteran, Veterans Day, that will um, just send a nice positive uh, signal um, f from the city of Orange um, to all our veterans and everybody else that as you um, drive down 280 East and West. Thank you, Council President. I think we're getting a new flag for the Elks Club, right? Yeah, and just so you know, I've actually raised the request with DOT, who has to approve it. So, um, you know, maybe I should ask for forgiveness instead of permission, but. That's what I normally do. Um, <laughs> I will. Uh, I'll see what, what can be done to move them. Just do it. I and, say go for it. And, <laughs> and, and, and as another and, gesture, and on the record. We, we, <laughs> we are ordering 100 small flags that we will march with. And at the end of the uh, program, we're going to all put them on the lawn at the Elks Club in memory of a veteran so that when you ride by there afterwards, it should look really nice with all the flags that we're going to leave there. And then we're going to collect them and save them for next year. I can't. I can't. <laughs> OK. Please move the agenda. OK. Ordinance on introduction, first reading, 51-2019. is going to be amended. I'm reading the amendment into the record. We're doing, Abon? We, we're not doing it. Huh? You're not doing the second reading ones? Oh, did I skip? Oh, so, wow, I'm trying Sorry. to really get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ordinance on second reading public hearing. 38-2019 is going to be amended. I'll read the title and then read the amendment. An ordinance to amend and supplement the code of the City of Orange Township, Chapter 200, Vehicles and Traffic, Section 200-18.1, entitled Handicap Parking Spaces to Ensure Timely Removal of Unneeded Spaces, sponsored by Council Member Tensia Eason. The amendment is in section one, numeral one, mm -hmm. every two years commencing in 1995 as opposed to every three years. Is there, are there any citizens who wish to speak? Any citizens wish to speak on this ordinance? Motion to close citizens' comments. Second. Motion by Councilwoman Williams, second by Councilman Jackson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion on final? Move. Second. Motion by Councilman Coley, second by Councilman Jackson on the motion. Seeing a roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Okay. Council President Eason? Yes. 45 2019. An ordinance to amend the code of the City of Orange Township, Chapter 200, entitled Vehicles and Traffic, Section 200 52 1. Handicapped parking spaces, 52 Ridge Street. Any citizens wish to speak? Motion to close citizens' comments. Second. Motion by Councilwoman Williams, second by Councilman Johnson, Jr. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion to adopt on final? Move. Motion by Councilwoman Williams, can I get a second? Second. Second by Councilman Jackson. On the motion? Seeing none, roll call. Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. 46 2019. An ordinance to amend the code of the City of Orange Township, Chapter 200, entitled Vehicles and Traffic, Section 200 35, Section 4, Time Limit Parking Space, Alden Street. Any citizens wish to speak? Motion to close. Citizen comments? Move. Second. Motion by Councilman Johnson, Jr., second by Councilman Coley. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion to adopt on final? Move. Second. Motion by Councilman Jackson, second by Councilman Johnson, Jr. On the motion? Seeing on roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? <clears throat> yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. Ordinance on introduction and first reading. 51-2019 is going to be amended. I'll, read the, I'll read the amendment. A bond ordinance providing for phase one of the rehabilitation and or redevelopment of water transmission mains 
water distribution mains and wells by and in the city of Orange Township in the county of Essex, state of New Jersey, appropriating five million therefore and authorizing the issuance of five million bonds or notes to finance the cost thereof. Is there a motion to adopt as amended? Move. Second. Councilman Johnson and Councilwoman Williams. On the motion. Seeing on roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. The final reading for this ordinance will be Monday, November 18th, 2019. And that is, the, which is the public hearing. Which right. is the public hearing. 52-2019, mm -hmm. a bond ordinance providing for various various 2019 capital acquisitions and improvements for the city of Orange Township in the county of Essex, state of New Jersey, appropriating $9,046,000 thereof and authorizing the issuance of 8,611,000 bonds or notes of the city to finance part of the cost thereof. Is there a motion to adopt on first reading? Move. Second. Williams and Johnson. On the motion? Seeing none, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. This, the final reading for that will be also Monday. The final reading in public hearing will be Monday, November 18th, 2019. 53-2019, an ordinance to amend and supplement the code of the City of Orange Township, Chapter 166, Section 16, entitled Vacancy Decontrol to Identifying the State of New Jersey Housing and Urban Development Fair Market Rent Guidelines as the standard for vacancy decontrol rents. Is there a motion to adopt or in first reading? Move. Second. Motion by Councilman Williams, second by Councilman Johnson, Jr. On the motion? On the motion. Yes, Councilwoman Williams. Council President, through you to um, Director Hartwood. Mr. Hartwood, just the, um, the notice that kind of. Um, re yeah, I, I actually didn't get to do this today. I'm okay. sitting here looking at this and I'm saying, do you want to introduce it and I'll give you the report before the public hearing or you can hold it till the next meeting? No, it's a notice so we can just have yeah. it that kind of yeah, got this going. Okay. Roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. 54-2019, an ordinance of the City of Orange Township, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, establishing a Chapter 211 of the City Code of the City of Orange Township entitled Special Needs Registry, pursuant to NJSA 40-48-2.67. Is there a motion to adopt on first? Move. Second. Williams and Johnson. On the motion. Seeing none, roll call. Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. The final reading for this ordinance will be Tuesday, December 3rd, 2019. 55-2019, I'll read the title and then read the amendment. An ordinance to amend chapter 145, parks and playgrounds of the city code of the city of Orange Township to add a new article three entitled skate parks. The amendment is to take out the section K. Okay. Is there a motion to adopt as amended? Move. Councilman Second. Williams and Councilman Jackson. On the motion. Seeing on roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. The, Council final, I'm sorry. the final reading will be Tuesday, December 3rd, 2019. Council President, I apologize. On, as a point of order, I meant to do on the motion. Is this um, grand opening this week, too? It's on Friday. The skate park? Thursday, Thursday at noon, right? It's no. Friday. 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 Friday at noon. <laughs> okay. So you didn't read your email. I actually am looking at my calendar. They put it on wrong. 
Friday it's noon. Friday at noon. Okay. <clears throat> Consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered in its normal sequence of the agenda. Uh, resolution 338-2019 will be removed for a separate vote to be postponed. Are there any other items? We're actually... And we're just holding that one. We're not lifting it. We have to do it. We have to postpone it to the next meeting by a motion. Okay. Okay. All right. 2019 if you want to amend it so I can add the res the, or the bond ordinance numbers in, so we'll remove that one and 370, and I'll read the bond ordinances. At 384. In the, um, so they're in, not on the consent yes. agenda. No. And 384? Yeah. Yes. Are there any other items? I just so the council just a note. 384, <coughs> we're going to remove a separate vote. But prior to the separate vote, we're going to go to it as a, a quick executive session. Any other items? Uh, Madam, now, it's only going to be five minutes. Five. I'm going to put my time on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Madam Clerk, uh, if you give me a second, the one that I then the one that I commented on uh, the introduction of uh, the amendment that I mean the ordinance that uh, uh, Councilwoman Eason. Uh, and deduce 38 2019. Mm -hmm. The uh, orders to two. Did you change, yeah, you change it? To two? Yeah. I changed it already. You changed it already? Yeah, we did that already. Cool. All right. I'm over here. I'm trying to stay away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to stay away. The consent We understand. Agenda. We understand. We got you. We got you. Yeah. Now consists of. 371, 372, 373, 374, 375, 376, 377, 378, 379, 380, 381. 382 and 383. Is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda? Move. Second. Councilman Jackson, Jackson and Johnson. On the motion, seeing on roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. Um, resolution 338-2019, is there a motion to postpone to the November 18th meeting? Move. Second. Motion by Councilman Jackson, second by so. Johnson Jr. Move. On the motion? Seeing none, roll call Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. 369-2019 is going to be amended. I'll read the title and then read the bond ordinances associated with it. A resolution of the City of Orange Township in the County of Essex, State of New Jersey, authorizing the submission of an application to the Local Finance Board requesting approval of bond ordinances for the city and the issuance of not to exceed 5,200,000 water slash sewer utility bonds and not to exceed 8,611,000 general improvement bonds under the provision of the Municipal Qualified Bond Act, NJSA 40A colon 3-1 at SEC. The amendments are, um, number one is 43-2019, uh, the bond associated, the ordinance associated with the bond. Number two is 52-2019. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to adopt as amended? Move. Second. Motion by Councilman Williams and Jackson. On the motion? Seeing on roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? No. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. That's six yeas and one no. Motion passed. Okay. So at this time, the council has requested to go into a, a brief executive session. Did we do 370? 370? Oh, okay. Do 370. Five Let's minutes. 370. 2019, a resolution of the City of Orange Township and the County of Essex, State of New Jersey, authorizing the submission of application to the Local Finance Board requesting approval of, one, the issuance of qualified bonds under the provision of the Municipal Qualified Bond Act, NJSA 40A-3-1 at SEC, Two, the issuance of qualified bonds with non-conforming maturity schedules 
under provision of the local bond law, specifically NJSA 40A colon 2-26E and three, the issuance of qualified bonds through the New Jersey Infrastructure Bank pursuant to the provisions of NJSA 58 colon 11B-9A. The amendments are, one is uh, ordinance, the bond is 39-2019, two is 51-2019, three is 41-2019, and four is 44 and five is 42 Five is what? 42. Thank you. 42. Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt as amended? Move. Second. Williams and Jackson. On the motion? Seeing on roll call? Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? No. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. That's six yeas, one no. Motion passed. Yeah. Thank you. Council. Huh? Oh, I can't. You can do a point of order and I can do it. Yeah. Council President. Council. I'm sorry. I'm just about to. When is the local finance board meeting? The 13th. Of November? Correct. Okay. Council, uh, we have one walk on. Can we do a point of order and let's take care of that before we um, go into the executive session? It's, it's your pleasure. You want to do it now or wait till later? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do okay. It. Let's do it, Council President. All right. Can I have a motion? Move the walk so we, on. Are we, because we're going out of order, do we have to suspend the rules now? Yeah, we just said a point of order. We're going to suspend the rules. A motion to suspend the rules so we can do the one walk on. Okay, move to suspend. Second. Jackson Johnson. Do a roll call. Roll call. Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr.? Yes. Uh, Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman w yes. Uh, Wooten? Yes. Council President Co Eason? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, so we suspended the rules and we'll go to new business walk on. <clears throat> resolution 385-2019 WO, a resolution for the transfer of appropriations. Is there a motion to walk this item onto the agenda? Move. Second. Who was motion that? by Coley, second by Jackson. On the motion, seeing on roll call. Councilman Coley? You yes. Want to give the public an opportunity to speak on yeah. the resolution? We're just putting it on the agenda first. Oh, okay. Sorry. Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. C Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. Are there any citizens who wish to speak on this item? No. Is there a motion to close citizen comments? No. Councilman Williams and Councilman Jackson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Resolution 385-2019-WO, a resolution for the transfer of appropriations. Is there a motion to adopt? Move. Williams Second. and Johnson. On the motion? Council President? Yes, Councilman Williams. Did you get to review? Um, Anything from the budget consultant regarding this? Yes, um, it went over and they said. It Would was you, a, uh, you you sent the email yeah. over? Yes. Uh, it went to the clerk's office from um, Megan O'Hanlon of Lurch and NC Higgins. Okay, thank you, Council President. Roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason. Yes. Okay. Um, what resolution number are we at? 385. Uh, Council President, a yeah. motion to extend the meeting. That's the next one. The next one. Oh, so okay, so resolution 386-2019. Yeah. Um, a resolution. Well, could we have a motion to extend the meeting? We need to extend the meeting for uh, 15 minutes. 
A motion to extend the meeting. A motion to extend the meeting. We have a motion to extend the meeting. I did the motion. I second. All right. All right. Who did the motion? We. Councilman we. Williams and, and Jackson. On the motion, seeing on roll call, Councilman Coley. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Johnson Jr. Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson. Yes. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Councilwoman Wooten. Yes. Council President Eason. Yes. Uh, resolution 386-2019, uh, a resolution to enter into closed executive session to discuss pending litigation matters. Or is it contracts? Pending litigation. Litigation? No, no, no. Litigation? Okay. Pending litigation matters. Can I get a motion? Move. 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 <laughs> Everybody. Motion by Councilwoman Wooten. Second? Second. Second by Councilman Jackson. On the motion? Seeing on roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. Can I have a motion to enter into executive session? Move. Second. Motion yeah. by Councilwoman Williams? Wooten. And second by Councilwoman Wooten. On the motion? Seeing on roll call, Councilman Coley? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? Yes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? Yes. Councilwoman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wooten? Yes. Council President Eason? Yes. We're now entering into executive session at 1029 p.m. And action will likely be taken. And action will be taken. We have one more item to vote, vote on. Marty. Can I have a motion to reconvene Move into the regular meeting? Second. Uh, second. Motion by Councilman Jackson. Anybody want to second that motion? Second. Johnson. Johnson. Councilman Johnson Jr. seconded. it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We're now reconvened at 10.40 p.m. Yeah. <clears throat> 384-2019, a resolution retaining Whipple Azaro, Azaro LLC as special counsel to represent Tashami Cooper in connection with matters pertaining to governmental in inquiries and investigation regarding the city of Orange Township and its employees in amount not to exceed $15,000 for the calendar year 2019. Is there a motion to adopt? Oh, I'm sorry. Is there a motion? Motion to adopt. She just Where read you either voted up or down, so yes, we have yes. to. Is there a motion? Okay. Move. Is there a motion? Move. Second. Okay. Williams and Jackson. A motion by Williams. Second, Second by Jackson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me get a piece of paper. Councilman Coley, on the motion first. Any late, comments on the motion? Um, Councilman Jackson, did you want to make your comments now? Are you okay? I'm fine. Okay. Councilman Coley? No. Councilman Jackson? No. Councilman Johnson, Jr.? No. Councilwoman Summers Johnson? No. Councilwoman Williams? No. Councilwoman Wooten? No. Council President Eason? Yes. That's one yay and six no's. The motion did not pass. Is there any uh, pending business, new business? Is there a motion to adjourn? Move. Second. Second. Okay, the next council meeting is November 18th, which Monday. is a Monday. Monday. I'm sorry, Monday. who made the motion? Williams? Second by Jackson? Yeah. Jo Jackson or Junior? Which one? Jackson or Junior? Jackson. <laughs> yeah. Jackson. All Don't in favor? Jackson did it at the same time. Uh, any opposed? No. Meeting adjourned at 1042 p.m.